everyone, and welcome in to soccer, soccer, soccer. It's playoff soccer here tonight. MASL 2 playoffs quarterfinal action here from Mercy Health Arena. I'm Cal Van Singel here tonight. My broadcast partner tonight, Dylan Darga. Take a look here at the uh, at the risers here. The general manager for the risers, Matt Schmidt, their head coach, Ben Ritzma. Our engineers tonight, Billy Mann and Jesse King and Matt Tarquette, all from Catchmark Sports. Our sponsors tonight, once again, Van Dyke Mortgage, Catchmark Sports, Durga Insurance, and PCN Network. And Dylan, we've worked this game before, but it was about a month ago, and it wasn't playoff action. So now it is playoff action. You're head co- you're, you are a soccer varsity boys girls head coach. What's what's the atmosphere going to be like now that it's playoff time? You would hope that it'd be a little bit different from the last time that these two uh, meet in downtown Muskegon. It was a it was a blowout, but uh, you know with the traveling team, you never know who you're going to bring. But I can imagine today, uh, Muskegon better you know know that they're bringing the A game today. Yes, absolutely. And uh, if you're wondering where John Russell is, well, he's been at Graceland down in I don't believe Memphis, isn't yeah, that? Or, yeah. yeah. And I heard I heard he's seen Elvis, so I don't know I don't know if we're ever gonna get John Russell back <laughs> or not. I know we wouldn't get his wife back if there's a Elvis sighting down there, but hopefully John Russell will be back here next week yeah, here. Good for him. Good yeah, for to him. yeah, to uh, call some semifinal and final action here. Once again here, the Muskegon Risers, they're the hosts here tonight, gonna take on the Chicago Mustangs here. And uh, Lee Andrews is on the uh, PA. He's got the player introductions. We're going to go down to Lee Andrews. And risers. We want to hear that enthusiasm all night. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. The Muskegon Risers promote good sportsmanship by our athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Profanity, racial ethnic comments, throwing objects, or other intimidating actions directed to officials, athletes, coaches, or other patrons will not be tolerated in our grounds for removal from Mercy Health Arena. The risers and management of Mercy Health Arena, thank you for your sportsmanship and cooperation. Fans, this is a friendly reminder that Mercy Health Arena is a non-smoking facility. Smoking and vaping is strictly prohibited throughout the entire arena. We thank you for your cooperation. Fans, did you know a group of crocodiles is called a Basque and a group of eagles a convocation? Whatever you call your group, if you bring a group of 20 or more to a risers game, your ticket is $10 and includes your ticket, hot dog, chips, and a pop. You can order tickets online at muskegonrisers.com or by calling the risers office at 231-299-0006. Get your group together and enjoy some exciting risers indoor soccer. Hey, Risers fans, the team store has brand new exclusive Risers gear. We have replica jerseys, hats, shirts, and more. So before the game begins, stop by the Risers team store located behind section 102. Show your Risers team spirit and get your Risers gear before it is gone. Promotional Communications Network is your full service video production company. Our specialists are the official video crew for Mercy Health Arena. Whether your live event is in an arena for thousands of excited fans or in a smaller venue for a private gathering, Promotional Communications Network can help you communicate your ideas. And fans, on Sunday, April 24th, from 8 a.m. to noon, the Muskegon Lake Watershed will be cleaned up by volunteers at 12 different locations from the lower Muskegon River to Lake Michigan. Volunteers, just show up. Bring your family, friends, and co-workers. Meet new people, make new friends. A great way to do good for our community. Between 8 a.m. and 8.30 a.m., meet at the CIO Hall, 490 West Western Avenue, downtown Muskegon, near the tool trailer. Pre-cleaning refreshments will be available. Thank you for your support and helping keep our Lakeshore community beautiful.
Hey fans, if you're hungry, grab something to eat or drink at our concession stand located directly behind section 116 and the Bud Light stage. Don't forget to try Teddy Spaghetti's world famous toasted ravioli and wings, so fill your hunger before the game begins. And Risers fans, we've gone digital. Be sure to check the QR code area located near the east and south entrances of Mercy Health Arena or check out our website at www.muskeganrisers.com for our player roster and follow along with the players on the field. And here's some great news, Risers fan. The Muskegon Risers and the city of Muskegon were selected to host the MASL2 semifinals and championship games. The semifinals will be held on Friday, April 8th. Games will be at 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. The championship game will be on Sunday, April 10th at 3 p.m. All games will be held right here at Mercy Health Arena. Fans can purchase a ticket good for all three games for $25 for adults and $20 for kids. Individual tickets for both April 8th games are $14 for adults and $12 for kids. Tickets for the championship game on Sunday, April 10th are $14 for adults and $12 for kids. We hope to see you right back here at Mercy Health Arena for championship weekend, April 8th and 10th. And a special deal, the first 20 people to get MASL2 championship weekend passes will receive a free ticket to the West Michigan Ironman game on April the 9th. Risers fans and welcome to Mercy Health Arena for tonight's MASL2 playoff matchup between the visiting Chicago Mustangs and your Muskegon Risers. Yeah, it's playoff time. We gotta hear you tonight. What do you say? Tonight, the first quarter, we have the Family Financial Credit Union Dance Cam. We have the Mackenzie Price trivia question at halftime. We have a special guest. We've got the Strikers soccer team to entertain us at halftime. We have the third quarter curly shuffle, and we have the three stars of the game. So, Risers fans, we want you to be loud. We want you to have fun. We want to win tonight. Let's hear you, Risers fans. Yeah. Play introductions are coming up next. Stay tuned. Riser soccer is coming up. And we're back here live here, here in Mercy Health Arena, the M -A -M -A -M -A -S -L playoff quarterfinal hockey. And we're going to throw it back over to Billy. Do a quick ad here, Billy. Van Dyke Mortgage, we, you know, we started uh, 1987, July of 1987. The company was founded here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We recruited Mario in to join our company as one of our uh, branches to serve the Muskegon community. He has grown to uh, five locations, uh, serving people up and down the lake shore. A lot of companies, they're sometimes in it more for themselves and closing that deal for just their monetary reward. And I think with Mario and his company, it's not just that. And I don't know if that always happens in our world. Hi, I'm Jenna Potts, your local Farm Bureau insurance specialist with the Durga Insurance Group. We are a company dedicated to serving only Michigan. We know you, we understand you, we protect you. All of us at the Durga Insurance Group live and work right in this area, so we're always nearby. Local agent, local service, and local savings. Come and see us today or visit our website, durgainsurancegroup.com, to find out more. Ruben Ortiz. Number 14, Ronaldo Rojas. Number eight, Leo Acosta. Number 23, Martin Murillo. 
Number 17, Jimmy Matthew. Number 90, Sergey Wozniak. Number 24, Wolganja Emana. And number 27, Ricardo Orizogo. The coach is Dino Delaski and Armando Gamboa. fans it's a beautiful night for playoff indoor soccer in Muskegon we want it to be loud and mercy out the arena for the entire game so risers fans are you ready then it's time to get on your feet put your hands together and welcome your Muskegon risers from Johannesburg, South Africa, goalkeeper, number one, Akani Mayombu. From Grand Rapids, Michigan, number four, Brandon Dinsmore. All the way from Muskegon, number six, Brandon Edwards. From Guatemala City, Guatemala, Number seven, Aldeny Mendez. From Kalamazoo, Michigan, number 11, Jacob Potts. From Kentwood, Michigan, number 12, Franco Calabrese. From Cleveland, Ohio, number 13, Steve Merker. From Hiroshima, Japan, number 14, Tachi Yamada. From Grand Rapids, number 16, Patrick Beal. From Grand Haven, goalkeeper, number 17, Michael Vollmer. From Buffalo, New York, number 23, Colin O'Keefe. From Brighton, Michigan, number 27, James Dutcher. All the way from Muskegon, number 68, Michael Schmidt. From Guatemala City, Guatemala, number 77, Alexis. Mendez from Grand Rapids, number 94, Moses Crawford. And from Lagos, Nigeria, number 99, TJI Faturati. Our athletic trainer is Olivia Kay, and your risers head coach is Ben Ritzma. Let's hear it for your Muskegon Risers. And we're back here in Muskegon for the MASL2 playoffs quarterfinal action here tonight at Mercy Health Arena. Once again, and Lee Andrews time, doing a great ask, job here. The introductions, and, and now we have honor, the national country, anthem. And the brave men and women.
Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fights o'er the ramparts we washed were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof to the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled Thank you, Charlie. And we're back. Billy, hear us good? Everything good? All right, it's a go. Welcome welcome in once again, Dylan. Hey. Great to have you here. Thank Just you. A Thanks couple. for having me back. You bet. Thanks for coming out and helping out here tonight. Just a couple minutes now from kickoff, I believe they call it. Is that what they call kickoff. it? Soccer yep, kickoff, let's, let's okay? Yep. So if we're a little bit behind maybe on some of the soccer guys here tonight, we can tell you are from uh, Chicago. We can tell you about 20 minutes ago, we were given up basically a whole new lineup with <laughs> names and numbers. We have seven roster changes. And uh, I am not John Russell. I cannot keep track of these guys. They don't have that photographic memory. So, Dylan, I'm really going to need you here for hey, Chicago here tonight. We'll be a well-oiled machine by the fourth quarter here. Yeah, hopefully we are. So, yeah, once again, M MASL 2 playoffs quarterfinal action here at Mercy Health Arena. Our sponsors tonight, Van Dyke Mortgage, Catchmark Sports, Durga Insurance, and PCN Network. I'm Calvin Single, Dylan Darge here beside me, Lee Andrews on the uh, public address here. General manager here is Matt Schmidt, head coach Ben Ritzma for the risers, and the engineers Billy Mann, Jesse King, and Matt Tarkett here tonight. And uh, Dylan, their head coach. Ben Ritzma has that team on a quick huddle. What's he telling his team right now, you Gosh, think? I, you know, they've had a little bit of time off since the last time they played. And, uh, you know, they were playing very good soccer towards the end of their season. Uh, both these teams, they played four times this year. Uh, they split two and two. Two of those games were one goal uh, differential. So uh, I think the advantage really comes from uh, being here, being downtown Muskegon. Uh, it is nasty outside, but it's nice and warm inside. Uh, I think that uh, Coach Rismo's just got to keep on building on what he's, he's brought to the table today and, and really hope that this home crowd's gonna, going to help and this, this marvelous uh, stadium that we're playing in tonight. Yeah, I tell you what, they've really done a great job here fixing this place up. Yes, they have. Yep. Well, Akani Mayumbo will be in goal here tonight for the Muskegon Risers. Gets a quick little hug here from uh, Brandon Edwards. Yeah, Muskegon without their two leading scorers. Yes, good point. Uh, tonight, but you do see uh, Mendez in there, Aldoni, and he's been playing some fantastic ball lately, so mm -hmm. you got to imagine he'll carry the load tonight for Muskegon. So Chicago's going to be on the, they're going to have the kickoff, and we are underway of the long kick, kick deep down, down into that left corner here. Chicago trying to control over here on that left side, back up here to midfield. Back down inside and kind of in the middle. They're trying to get something st set up. Stolen away maybe, but no. So maybe the ball is going to go out of bounds, and it does. Will be Muskegon ball here. Dylan? Cal, remember last time we played, or when we did this game, we had number 10 for Chicago that caused so many fits for Muskegon up top, and it looks like they're doing the same thing for him. Oh, that's right. He was very quick, wasn't he? Yes. He used a lot of great athleticism here. I think we so, used uh, the term posting up a lot. Yes. <laughs> Muskegon having a hard time here trying to get the, the ball advanced. 
into the uh, front court is what I guess I would call it. What would you call it? What do you yeah. call it this end? This Downing. is your attacking third. It's, so if it's, you just middle okay. third, attacking third, defensive third. All right, so down to there, attacking third. Ball turned over and still goes right back here to Muskegon. Akani here trying to find somebody open long pass into the attacking third here. Gets here down here and then it also goes right back over to Chicago. Back over to Muskegon. That's Potts over there on that side. Potts tied up and we have a whistle. Uh, got him on the back of the legs there, I think. Okay. So Chicago's going to control, I believe. Looks like a little line switch already there from yeah. Chicago, too. We got Yamada out there. Also Merker for Muskegon. Chicago on the move. And get it in the center. They're Great attacking stop. third. And they kick it, and then it goes back out of bounds. Yeah, a little bit, uh, maybe a little sloppy here yeah. early in this one. Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to take some time to, to everyone to kind of get a flow here. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can definitely tell there's some nerves here as it's the first uh, playoff game for the Muskegon Risers. Yeah, yeah long, long kick down down into the uh, offensive, offensive end here for Muskegon. And the ball, I thought it was going to go out of bounds, stays inbounds. We got a little tie-up over on that right side. Over there with that 27. Nope, that was 12, I think, for Connell. Muskegon trying to advance the ball. It's O'Keefe. O'Keefe loses it back out front oh, here. Good Can O'Keefe shoots? No, he does not score. He had a good look at it here, but didn't get it. Ball goes all the way back down into the offensive end here for Chicago. And Akani kicks it back out of there. Over here to now number seven, Aldoni Mendez. Mendez is going to leave it out front here, over here now on that right side to Franco. Franco down into Aldani. And that's uh, T or that is uh, Moses with a shot that went high. Got to get my uh, soccer, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my soccer uh, bearings again here. It's been I haven't been here for about probably six weeks, so we'll get it figured out here in a minute. Crawford over there on that right side, he comes away with the steal, leaves it up here in the middle, and that's uh, Donnie Mendez. Mendez leaves it over here to that left side. We got somebody driving and score. Dylan, you got a I can see him. I can't get a number. Uh, 14. The new guy from Japan. Uh, Tachachi Tucha Yamada. I'll tell you what, what a great shot there by uh, Tachachi. <laughs> he had some options too. That was uh, the nice thing about that is uh, he, he could take it. He could, he, there was somebody crashing far side. Uh, what a great ball there by Mendez. Yeah, I tell you what, Yamada doing a nice job getting that in there. Had the little defensive pressure coming down on him and just shot a bullet in there to put it up one to nothing. So the risers now 1-0 over top of, uh, and we get block here just like that. Chicago's on the attack on the offensive end. And nice job there by, uh, by Adani with the block. Yeah, they got, got away with a the handball there too. Yeah. Connie with a long pass right out here to midfield. And we had a riser go down, but risers now with the ball three on four as they try to attack from that left side. That's Dutcher, but then they're going to leave it over to Potts. Potts controls, sends it back though across across the midfield stripe. Now attacking once again, Muskegon is in that uh, 16. That's uh, Beal, who just was a late, not a scratch, but came to us late here. Late ad. Yeah, late ad. Thank you. And we have a Chicago guy went down awkwardly. I think he's going to be okay. And that was that number eight for them, uh, Costa. He's back up, though. He's applying big-time pressure up top there. Yep. Great ball here. A long kick here, but it's going to go down here to the keeper for Chicago. Basically, he went from one keeper to the next. Adding a little pressure out here is Merker. Chicago's still in control. And that sends it over here to number 24. That is... Uh, Emina. Emina leaves it back over on that right side. Over there, number 12 for them. And our oh, numbers, that's Ortiz, our numbers are all mixed up. Yes, so they are. we apologize for that, trying to keep track of everybody. Brandon Dinsmore in there just battling, trying to come away with it. Chicago still controls. Dylan? Gosh, it was, uh, it's nice to get that first goal. Uh, that settles nerves. It really does. Uh, you can play a little bit more free-flowing if you're Muskegon once you get that first one. Yeah, kind of that ice is broken, is it not? Yep, yep. Yep, long kick by the keeper here is going to go down onto the Chicago end. And it's going to come bouncing all the way back out here to midfield. Left over there, number 23. 
And that is uh, Murillo. And the ball goes out of bounds. We've got a line change here for uh, Muskegon. It's been a fast-paced yep. game so far. You can, neither team is sitting back, which is great to see. Mendez and over there, and O'Keefe down in deep here for the risers. Keeper here for Chicago has it. He's going to roll it out here right side. Goes back to the keeper. Leaves it over here, number 23. I don't know if I have it. Yeah, that's Murillo. Murillo trying to control Chicago, trying to get something set up. Good defense here by the risers. Absolutely. They're playing very disciplined. Oh, we got a push here. I tell you, that's not number 10. <laughs> Man, that guy's all over the place, but he's going to get the... Uh, Edwards had to look up to him to say something to yeah, him there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's a big kid. The kid's athletic, but hey, how about Edwards showing a little moxie? Absolutely. I don't care if you're a foot taller yep. than me. Yeah. You got to do that. Absolutely. Yep. Miss right. in here with the ball, and we have a quick whistle. Delayed there. Thought uh, Mendez thought he was going to be in there for a second. Is that what that was? Is that is it just because he delayed that little yeah, bit? Just, Sometimes the refs wait to see if there's any advantage is what that's called. And, okay. Um, it wasn't there. It was no advantage, so uh, they took it away. So. Gotcha. Long kick here down onto the uh, Chicago offensive end here. Taken away here by Muskegon. Muskegon now on the inbounds or on the advancing. That's TJ. EJ sets it up. and a t Another shot there by uh, Mendes, but that was blocked. Beautiful Crawford save. in there. Beautiful save by the keeper at the end there. Yeah. Crawford in here now. But he's back playing a little defense. He's easy to spot. He's got that great hair, and I'm extremely <laughs> jealous. Chicago with the ball at 27 out there, uh, or uh, Ricardo. Sometimes you just go with the easy name, you yep. know what I'm saying? Don't, Absolutely. Yeah, go with the easy one, being single. Don't go the hard one. It's very t Oh, I do see that there are numbers on their shorts, on their uh, left leg there. Oh, okay. So, good to, yep, good to know. Thank you. It's a, it's a tough thing to see, though, still. <laughs> yeah. Chicago still the ball goes across midfield. I tell you that's number four out there. He's doing a great job of getting it up there and a run on that, but ball went sailed wide. To to chat or <laughs> oh. Yamada takes it away. We have over here Moses Crawford Jr. from the right tries to set up a nice centering pass there to Potts, but just missed. Keeper comes away with it here for Chicago. Uh, Enema, Enema for Chicago with control. Leaves it back to the to the keeper. Keeper, the long kick. A good job there by uh, Muskegon to head that one right back up here to midfield. Yeah, when you got your keeper that confident to come out, it's just another field player, which is great. Yep. Ball stolen away nicely by Dinsmore. Dinsmore is going to, Dutcher's out there too. Dutcher has it, trying to get it back to Dinsmore. Dutcher still has it, does leave it over to Dinsmore. A Schmidt in there also now. And that's Merker has it. Merker has it. He has it taken away there by number two, Lopez. Lopez in control. Leaves it over here to number eight. And I can't even find him on my program right now. Oh, nice fake by him. Awesome. Chicago trying to advance the ball. Nice block out there, I think, by Dinsmore. Chicago still with the ball, and they're going to knock it off. And we're going to have a penalty out there. Not a penalty by by Dutcher, but Dutcher kind of ran over a guy. A little, little bit late there on Dutcher, yeah. but you know, it sends a message. <laughs> still one to nothing, 725 here left to go. First quarter. Nice oh, I thought Muskegon was gonna steal it, but they did not. Chicago doing a nice job of keeping it in control. Uh Dan, no, NOE no out here with the ball. Leaves it over here right side for Chicago. Oh, uses the wall nicely. And Akani comes out with the, uh, not the save, but just to uh, scoop up a loose ball. Akani with a long throw. He's got a, he's got a big throw, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Little uh, two-on-two two here action. It's just gonna, the ball's just going to roll over to the keeper here for Chicago, and he clears it out. Stolen away here. Here we go, number 12. That's Franco. Shot. Score! Pressure by the risers there. Yeah. They saw the ball come back to the, the keeper and they decided to high press there and created the turnover. Franco Calabrese with a goal, his first of the evening from Kentwood, Michigan. This one's now two to nothing. 647 left to go here in the first quarter, and we got 
I think Chicago says, hey, we need a timeout. We gotta, we gotta fix a few things here. Yeah, there, it looks like Chicago's arguing too. It looks like they thought there was gonna be a foul. Uh, it could have gone either way, and, and then yep. look at, they're, they're still yep. arguing out yep. on midfield there. Tell you what, we're gonna take a quick timeout. You're listening to MASL2 playoff hockey from Mercy Health Arena. Billy? I'm Jenna Potts, your local Farm Bureau insurance specialist with the Durga Insurance Group. We are a company dedicated to serving only Michigan. We know you, we understand you, we protect you. All of us at the Durga Insurance Group live and work right in this area, so we're always nearby. Local agent, local service, and local savings. Come and see us today or visit our website, durgainsurancegroup.com, to find out more. And we're back here at Mercy Health Arena where the Muskegon Risers quickly have a 2-0 lead here on the Chicago Mustangs. And Dylan, uh, you were watching here for a minute. We have a uh, Mustang player who's not very happy right now. No, it, it, that, that play could have gone either way. They're, they're arguing that there was maybe a potential foul on that ball that was brought out by their keeper. And, uh, you know, when you're Muskegon there and you're high pressing, you know, a foul back and then you're attacking third isn't really going to hurt you that well. So you press as high as you can. Uh, you let the put it kind of in the refs' hands, and uh, they didn't call a foul. And it was a three v two the other way, and thank, thankfully it went uh, went in for the Missouri Risers. Yeah, this is one of these games. If you've never been here, it's so fast, you know, because there's no out of bounds. It's a much smaller field than, than, than an outdoor field, yes. so things happen so quickly. Yep. And that one there, that score right there by a Calabrese just kind of basically came out of nowhere. There was a steal, it got over to Calabrese, and boom, it's in the net. Yeah, not only is it smaller than an outdoor field, it's larger than normal indoor field. So okay. you've got a lot more space with the same amount of people on the field. So Chicago with the ball, moving it towards uh, the Muskegon end here. Leaves it out there to number 17, Matthew. How about this, Jimmy Matthew? I'm all over that name. <laughs> but stolen away here by Muskegon. Great possession here by the risers. Yep, risers with the ball. Turn it over here, though. And we go. Oh, we might have a quick little one-on-one -on -one action. A nice shot. But it's blocked by uh, Akani. Akani, Kella, Akani Mayumbo doing a nice job there. Stopping that one from going in. Chicago still in control. Left side trying to bit, move it out here to the middle. Still controlled over here. Left side, though, number 17. I don't know if they even have a 17. Shot by number 14 out there. Blocked Rojas. Rojas has a block nice by Akani, and Akani clears it nicely. Now looking at stats before the game, Mayambo is top four in, in goals against average, save percentage, and wins in the in the whole league in the MSAL. So that's a, a pretty, you know, good feather in his cap there. Yeah, I tell you, Akani's really been a pleasant surprise here for this team that's done very, very well. Tell you what, Matt Schmidt, or Michael Schmidt in there. Looks brother like to match man. Yeah, he did get a haircut. Yeah. He had a nice header to kind of keep it back in the uh, Muskegon in there. Uh, Moses Crawford over there back in there. Leave it to back out and on front to Schmidt. Schmidt throws it towards the oh, throws it towards it, throws it towards the goal. Shot, but it did not go in. 77 with that shot there of Alex Mendez, and that was high and wide left. It's good opportunities there by Muskegon. Again, they're they're pressing high, you know, whether they're up a goal, yeah. down a goal, that they, they are they are pressing. And Mer you can tell uh, Chicago's feeling that pressure right now. Yeah, Merker in there, Yamada in there, the two of the guys up here playing defense along with uh, trying to get a number on him. One of those uh, 11, I think, it is Potts. Chicago still in control just across midfield. I think, oh, they, they wanted a stoppage of play, but there wasn't one. Ball still over here on that left side. Things have just kind of slowed down for a minute. That's Merker over there on that left side. Kicks it back into the attacking end here. Leaves it over here to for Yamada. Yamada, I believe, with a goal here already on the evening, correct? Yep. Yep. And oh, we tried to get a kick by Merker. Merker couldn't get it going. And then we have uh, Calabrese playing some defense. Tell you what, that little Yamada, he's all over the place. He is. Got a lot of energy, that young man does. Chicago with the ball, stolen back away here by uh, Dutcher, and we're going to have a whistle. Yeah, Yamada has been a, a great addition to this team. He's uh, a product of Japan, came here to play at M Muskegon Community College. And, mm -hmm. uh, nice to, to put on that uh, Muskegon green tonight. Yes, yeah, so there's a 10-23 out there. O'Keefe, O'Keefe has got a haircut. 
since the last time I've seen That's not fair because a lot of times you look at haircuts to identify who these guys are, and I'm like, who is that? And I glance at the number. Oh, that's O'Keefe. Yeah, O'Keefe and Dutcher, we got confused so many times last, last game. Oh, my goodness, yes. Moses Crawford out there playing a little bit of defense, and I tell you what, Merck is, I think that's Merker in there. No, that's O'Keefe playing great defense. O'Keefe with a steal. He tries to advance. He falls down. Chicago back with the ball just across midfield. On the tacking end, now we have a four-on-four four here for Chicago. We got Pestio number eight there for them. That guy's all over the place. He's trying to get a shot, but does not. And it's a turnover here by Chicago, but goes right back to right back to Chicago. Chicago now trying to get something set up on that right side. Back over here, that left side. Shot blocked here. Ball just kind of changing hands here. Looks like Muskegon's going to have it, but no, it's going to go right back to Chicago. Chicago then stolen away by O'Keefe. Chicago with the ball there, number 23. I don't know if they even have a 23. Shot goes throw towards the um, net, and we have a quick, yeah, not turn, yeah, it was a turnover. Yeah, it's good, good stoppage there. It was getting a little sloppy on both ends there. You could tell that... Uh, Muskegon wasn't as organized in the back as they were in the first uh, 13 minutes of this game. Back underway here for Muskegon, and that was Schmidt with a nice pass down, down field. He's going to leave it over to Crawford, over to Schmidt, trying to get something set up in the middle. It's going to go back to Crawford, and it's going to go right to the keeper. He's going to... Lopez here for Chicago has the ball, gets it across midfield, leaves it out here to number 10, uh, Michael Marciana. Chicago still with a long kick, but sends it right to the keeper again. Should be an easy one for the keeper here. Yeah. His arm's going to be tired because he's throwing these bombs out here all the time. They're so accurate, too. That's yeah, the, they are. They're right to a green every time. Yep. Chicago still with the ball. And Muskegon playing good defense. I'll tell you what, right now, that's uh, Yamada really giving that uh, that guy fits here. Muskegon with the ball. I'm sorry, Chicago with the ball. Gets a shot, but it goes wide. Good clearance there. Oh, this is Yamada. Is it trying to get something set up, but he waits for everybody. Waits for his teammates. No, he goes down. No whistle. And Chicago still there. Oh, we have a st stolen away. And I'll tell you, Merker just could not get a good leg on it, could he not? Ball goes out of bounds. Dangerous ball from number two there, uh, Lopez from Chicago. Boy, Merker, didn't you think, oh, you know, if he could, if he could have got his feet set, he might have had something there. It was uh, great pressure, great pressure by him. Chicago with the ball trying to get something advanced. Look at this, we got a steal here by TJ. TJ, TJ just throws one in on the net. Nothing happens. There's Their keeper blocks it, blocks another one. With it's tied up here in that right corner on the Muskegon offensive end, and now Chicago clears. Clears it out over here, back in the middle, but Dutcher's there, going to be there for the steal. But good job there by a, by a Chicago player to try to come away with that. Man, that's Muskegon having a hard time getting it out of there, is he not? Yeah, that was not the right place for that move there. And now they do. Akani gets a leg on it, gets it back out here to midfield. Chicago still with the ball. Trying to get something set up, but it's gonna, going to be taken away by Muskegon Riser here. I think that's Edwards and Akani with a nice kick to get it out of there, but it goes right back to a Chicago guy. Shot high, misses, and a score by Chicago. But are they going to say something? Hold on. Are they going to say it was good or not? I think they're going to say it's good. Akani is wow. really protesting it. A lot of people fired up there. I, You know, I... As soon as it hits the top of that glass up there, it is it is tough to see if it hits that net. And I think the refs are going over it right now. Um, I, I'd probably say that's probably the right call there. Uh, okay. Unless there's a, a – well, let's see what they say. Still waiting for some clarification, correct? Yeah, and it's strange that they're going to the people on the sidelines. Okay, it looks like they're, they're taking it back. I was wrong. Well, this will get the Chicago coach fired up. Yep. And if I remember right, it doesn't take him a lot to no, get him fired yep, up. And, and you are 100% correct if you look at the, the altercation that's going on right now between the refs and the coaches on the other side. Here. 
A little fiery over there right now. Yeah, well, there's still yeah. a lot of time to play. Yeah. So 32 seconds left to go first quarter. Muskegon still with a 2-0 lead here over the Chicago Mustangs. I can feel the game slowly starting to come back to me, but not quick enough. <laughs> oh. It's a quick game, isn't it? It it's is fun, quick. Entertaining. People are getting their money's worth tonight. Still have a conference here, and we are back underway with Muskegon with the ball. Connie with another nice long throw. That one, though, went right to a Chicago guy, and he headed it right back to a Connie. Connie goes, let's try this again. And once again, stolen away by Chicago. They're at midfield over here, left side, back over in the midfield. Pesky, number eight. This kid's just unbelievable. He's everywhere. He is everywhere. Chicago's still trying to get it set up midfield. Better get going if they're going to try anything. A long kick went wide right and down to 2-1. And there's the buzzer. That's the end of the first quarter. Muskegon Risers 2. Chicago Mustangs nothing. We're going to send it back over to Billy Mann. We're going to take a quick here timeout. We'll be right back. Hello. This is Dimitri, the Russian hacker. Please disregard the following message from Catchmark Technologies. It will make my life easier. Thank you. If you own a business today, that business is exposed to digital risk. Data privacy, compliance, and of course, cyber attack risks are just a few that you may need to manage. If you don't have the staff or internal expertise to help mitigate the risks your organization faces, call Catchmark Technologies at 616-384-4616. Van Dyke Mortgage, we, you know, we started uh, 1987, July of 1987, the company was founded here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We recruited Mario in to join our company as one of our uh, branches to serve the Muskegon community. Uh, he has grown to uh, five locations, uh, serving people up and down the lake shore. A lot of companies, they're sometimes in it more for themselves in closing that deal for just their monetary reward. And I think with Mario and his company, it's not just that. And I don't know if that always happens in our world. And welcome back here from Muskegon Risers Hockey, Hockey, Soccer. I knew I was going to do that at some point tonight. Muskegon Risers Soccer. And Dylan, Muskegon with a 2-0 lead here so far. If I'm Ben Ritzman, I'm really pleased with that quarter there. 2-0 uh, lead uh, in a playoff environment is something that you've never been to, never experienced, never has never happened. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that's a big, uh, big step in the right direction. Uh, if I'm Chicago, though, uh, I'm a bit frustrated. You can tell that they are chirping at the refs. There are there's a lot of a lot of talking, so they need to draw back that focus on their play because honestly, it's it hasn't been great. It's been it's been decent at times, but uh, Muskegon has gotten the better in their transitions. You know, you take a look at this. Where I've been around football and basketball, mostly broadcasting my whole life, and uh, so you, you kind of know the effect that you know those coaches can have on officials. Is it the same for soccer? Yeah, there's definitely a time where you you know you you, you don't necessarily um, you know focus on the, the what just happened. It's about the next one. You're trying to you're trying to draw that next foul, that next uh, opportunity. So uh, just letting the refs know that you know you are watching. You are uh, you're gonna let them know what you think and. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not so much for what happened already happens, what's going to happen next. What do you think is going to happen here this next 15 minutes? Uh, this is going to be interesting for Chicago because I think that they're at a point right now where they've got to try to find some sort of flow on their attacking end. And right now, um, you know, Mayumbo has done a, a great job of, of, of getting everything, but there really hasn't been many quality looks. And, and I guess you could flip it for Muskegon. They've had, you know, the, the quality looks that they've had, they finished. So mm -hmm. um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But, you know, Messina goes up 3-4-0. Uh, you know, I mean, it's not panic button time, but you're, but you're going to have to find something different to do. More important for Muskegon to have a good quarter offensively or defensively for the next 15 minutes? I think you've got to press. I think you've got to go at more attacking. I think you, you keep it going. Okay. And we're back underway, and Muskegon has the ball as they throw one in towards the keeper here for Chicago. Over there, Mendez over there in that right side battling the Chicago guy. And Chicago takes it away, and we have a shot. But went wide left. That shot was by Edwards. And the keeper picks it up, makes a throw. But he throws about 10 or 15 yards less than Akani does. <laughs> with uh, Chicago with a, kind of a wild shot here to the left side. Connie just kind of let it go through. Chicago's kind of picking up some offensive intensity. 
Ball gets turned over, and it's going to be Muskegon ball. We're 30 seconds in, and we've got our first foul. So I hope that's not going to be the case. Yeah. It's TJ in there, just quick comes in, and also Crawford comes in. TJ, the nice kick gets it all the way down to the other end, or so I thought. And we're going to have a quick foul here by uh, Mendez. Oh, I thought it's not going to be on Mendez. Shot, score! What happened? I don't think it's going to count, though, is no, it? No, I, I think he pointed the wrong way. And Muskegon, as soon as they did that, they took the ball and went with okay. it. Yeah, so I was right. M Mendez, Alex Mendez had a. Uh, little foul there yep. and the official one he points like you said he pointed the wrong way and Muskegon took off with it that's what you're taught to do oh yeah player. Absolutely. Yep. so Chicago now kicks it down into the offense on their offensive end or offensive third I should probably just call it their offensive end there I can I can offensive, remember that offensive third you're good yeah. with that absolutely offensive end you're doing a good job so Chicago still with the ball here trying to get something set up Yep, centering pass. We're going to get a kick, but that's blocked out front here by Muskegon. Muskegon, oh, they had control, but it went bounced into the stance of Chicago. We'll still have the ball here right at midfield. Two to nothing here. 14 minutes left to go here in the second quarter. I'm Calvin Single, Dylan Darga, helping me out here tonight, doing a great job. And I'm learning things, which is what I need to do about this sport. It's a, it's a fun sport. You're picking up great. Long, long kick here by Chicago, kind of down into their their offensive end shot, but blocked by Akani. Nice job by Akani with that shot and another whistle. Oh, what happened? There's a foul there by Crawford, I think, but maybe. Yep, it looks like he's gonna be on Crawford, but uh, you know, it, to me that was a clean tackle, but okay. Um, you know, we'll see. Is this gonna be a pen like a penalty kick no, then, it was or like a outside the box? But it's gonna be a free kick. Free so, kick, okay. So again, misdirection, or you just have a look at it. Uh, you hope that you set that wall to cover one area of the goal here. And, okay. Uh, looks like they've done that. Looks like it kind of wants that near post to be covered, and the ball does its job. Yeah, nice job there by one of the uh, mus or Muskegon guys with a black. We got a little three on two coming here in that offensive man. We're gonna have a no one that extra pass shot miss. Oh, man, three on two. They could not convert on that. But Crawford right there, he's battling. I think that's, no, that's uh, Potts is in there, and those two guys are battling for the ball and a whistle. Was there one too many passes Passes there? No, that was, okay. that was a build, great build up, and you, get, you kind of tip your hat to the keeper there for making the beautiful save. Okay. Looks like a blue card here on Potts. Oh, double blue card. Oh, it's going to go both ways then. Yeah, I no, this is interesting. Will they go 4v4? Will they put five on and just kind of call it a wash? Let's see what they do. Okay, it's 5v5. So they... Well, it's still 2 to nothing here. Second quarter. Chicago's going to be in the... Oh, in never mind. It's going to be 4v4. Sorry. 4 on 4. Okay, so we have Potts is in the, uh, in the penalty box here. And then number four for them, which is uh, Gomez. I found him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, once again, we had seven number changes here right before kickoff, so our uh, our stat sheet's a mess here for Chicago. Yeah, it looks like uh, they, you want to talk about fitness. Running on this big field uh, with just four players is going to be exhausting here for the next two minutes. Okay, great point. Thank you. Yeah, it was a quick shot on goal. I was looking down for a number here. I missed it, but I heard it. That was certainly Chicago still in control here. I think the keeper kind of keeps sneaking up here a little bit, too. He wants to get in on this action. This ball's still in the middle shot, but it's going to go wide left. Another shot wide left again. And Chicago's still going to stay in control. We had a Muskegon guy hustling to get down there to try to uh, take that away. He just couldn't quite get there. Number 10, Marciano over there on that right side. That's good, man. And that's the end of hit. Stolen away, but stolen right back by him. Nice save there by Connie. And another one. Back-to-back -back save by a Connie Mayumbo. Beautiful saves. Wow. <laughs> Whew. Those were beauties. Brandon Edwards playing some really good defense out here. Yep. Chicago still with the ball. Uh -oh. oh, man, I thought, I tell you what, I thought TJ might be able to snag that one or get that one, get possession of it. He almost does. Turnover here by, uh, uh -oh. oh, here we go. TJ comes away. That's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. A shot and a nice job by the keeper to block that. Both Dandy job by their keeper. Both keepers are on top of their game tonight. And their keeper number one, that's uh, Ricardo Por 
Kea, I believe is how you say that. Nice job by him, though, with that block. Had a one-on-one opportunity here by Mike Muskegon. Speaking of one-on-one, Chicago with a little one-on-one opportunity now. Shot over from that left side of Connie again with another nice save. Beautiful save. Boy, he's getting, he's getting pressured, and he's answering. We have a two-on-one here. Crawford over here on the right side is going to leave it over here. Shot missed Just a little bit too high. That was Beal. Patrick Beal. Beal is a little late to come in on that angle. I mean, he was a little late. Yeah, he, okay. he stayed out wide. He should have cut in a little bit more. And, oh, here we go. Yep. CJ over there trying to make something happen offensively, but he loses the ball. Looks like we're back to full strength yeah. now. Okay. O'Keefe with it coming to flying down that left side. But he's got like three Chicago guys right there, and he's battling. He's still battling in there. Yeah, he's going to come out of there to a Chicago player number four for them. That's Gomez. Where'd the ball go? There it is. I lost the ball for a quick second. I don't know how you do that, but you did. Muskegon has it. And that's uh, Merker in the middle. Throws it down towards the other end, towards Dins, uh, to uh, Dinsmore. But it's just turned over here. Chicago with the ball. Dylan? Yeah, Dinsmore had a little bit nicer, cleaner of a touch on that first one. He was in there. This, should be, this has been a great battle to watch uh, Schmidt and uh, is it Marciano. Uh, those guys must look each other in the eyes there. It's, uh, <laughs> that's a good battle there. Well, it's been an exciting five minutes of this uh, second quarter here. Yes, it has been. Still Muskegon with the lead. Two to nothing here. 10.30 left to go here. Second quarter. Chicago with the ball. Left side. Back over here to the right side to Murillo. Murillo throws it back down into their offensive end, offensive zone, offensive third. I'm going to be all over it now. I learned a new, new terminology tonight. And now they bring it back to midfield. Over here once again to Martin Murillo. He sends it way down into that left corner. Good defense right here, though, so far by Mendez. Mendez, and then we have it stolen away by the, by, uh, the other Mendez, Aldoni, brother, and he falls down. Gets back up, falls down again. He's tripped, rolls around. It's going to be a tripping. If it wasn't the first, the second, it had to have been the third. <laughs> right. Now that's good pressure by Mendez there. Mm -hmm. Well, Crawford is in there right now along with Aldoni Mendez. We also have number 16, Beal. And just like that, Muskegon turns it over. and I'll, I'll, Oh, look at this kick. Look at this. Wow. Akani Mahumbo kicks it from one end to the other, and he almost kicks it in the goal. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a three-line penalty, though, but uh, that was kind of entertaining to see. And he almost teardropped that thing right in there, didn't he? Oh, my, you could not have kicked that any better. So Chicago's going to have the ball way down on their offensive third. And that's number four there for Chicago. Lines up, boots it deep down into that left corner. Trying to, Chicago still the ball. Yeah, Muskegon guys in there battling, trying to take it away. Rojas hence sends it back down in that deep in that corner again. And Muskegon finally, great defense here, takes it away. T.J. Crawford battling with two uh, Mustang guys here. Chicago takes it back, almost had a trip there. Shot and it's oh it's blocked as it was headed in on on Akani. Chicago still with the ball. They're trying to get something set up, are they not? Yes, they are. It's uh, This has been a scrappy, scrappy quarter here. Mm -hmm. I love Gar the patience on Muskegon, though. They are playing man, man marking and, and doing a great job of it. Chicago still just battling out front, trying to get something set up. Mus Muskegon doing a nice job of trying to take things away, and we have a turnover right here to, Ch to Chachi Yamada. Yamada moves it in. He's going to leave it out, and to number 13, that Merker. Merker takes a shot. That's wide left. And we're sub, we have mass subbing going on here for Muskegon. Chicago with the ball. Shot, shot opportunity. Akani with another block. What a save. My goodness. He's been fun to watch, hasn't he? Oh, what a great outlet here. Oh, if he slips past that guy, he's in there. Akani Mayumbo with another brilliant, brilliant save here. For the Muskegon Risers. Now he's trying to kick him down there and it just goes out of bounds. <laughs> Maybe that's why he throws them more than kicks them. <laughs> Fan almost had a souvenir there. Yep. Dylan, thoughts? Oh, this has been entertaining. I think uh, 
you know, we'll see what happens, who, who can break the threshold here. Uh, both teams kind of playing stalemate, and uh, but pressing really high, and mm -hmm. um, not much success. I tell you what, Miami's been the uh, the MVP of this uh, this game. Let's Shot and score! Just like that. You have great analysis, pass, boom, score. That's how fast this thing goes. O'Keefe. I think, uh, I think it was O'Keefe. Nice job. Nice turnover and they're yeah. uh, attacking third and uh, yep. made him pay for it. And that is the speed and the quickness of this game. You are just, you know, I'm sitting here, you got some great analysis going on, and all of a sudden there's a steal and it comes right over here and boom, it's in the net that fast. I didn't even see that coming. Yeah, you know, I was watching, but I mean, it was like there was no attack going on. I'm just sitting here watching, kind of keeping track. Who's out there? Who's coming in? And all of a sudden, boom, it's in the net. Oh my goodness. Three to nothing. 7.57 left to go in the second quarter. This game is so fast. Yeah, even the refs are down there taking a little water break. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, it's playoff. It's playoff soccer now, so so much more on the line. Yeah, it means something. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they get, uh, the winner of this game gets to play next weekend on a Friday and Against, I believe, the uh, Cleveland team. Who I think is undefeated. Yeah, they. I think uh, they're the. I think they're the like the numero uno out here in this league. Yeah, their uh, goal differential is they have 151 goals for and only 53 against. And for reference, a second place team, Muskegon, has 94 goals for and 103 against. So, uh, you know, almost. Yeah, you know, 50 goals less Cleveland has been giving up yeah. uh, on the season than Muskegon. So uh, they're the dogs, but, you know, it's playoffs. Playoffs. You, you never know what yep. happens. Which, okay, let's take a look at their head coach here, Ben Ritzma. Wow, he has these guys ready They ready to play so far. They've come out there. They've played very well. They have the 3-0 lead with about halfway through here the second quarter. What's he telling us, guys? I, I, I think just like kind of what I said in the first beginning of this quarter is keep pressing, keep going high. There's no sense of sitting back and waiting for the game to come to you. Uh, they've done a good job to bring it to them, uh, and why not? You know, you've got the subs, you've got the talent, you've got the speed, you've got the skill, uh, and also, I mean, you've got a keeper behind you uh, that has made some phenomenal saves, and when you, that builds everybody up going forward. So. Yeah, I kind of my own boat tonight has just been electric. We've seen some of his game, some of the games here so far this season. He is he's just been incredible tonight. So. I mean, it's, he's putting on a clinic so far. Absolutely. So Chicago with the ball here. They're moving in towards their offensive third, trying to get something started. And they need to figure something out offensively because they are getting shut out here by Muskegon. And Chicago, the Mustangs, they are a very good soccer, soccer club, so they got to figure something out. Yeah, the team split. And I can imagine Muskegon won both their games at home and Chicago won both their games at home. And Thankfully, we're at home tonight. Yes. Well, a little turnover here by Chicago. Going to leave it over to Crawford. Crawford gets it about to midfield. Going to leave it over here to Mendez. Mendez comes out of a little bit of a scrum with it. Still has it. He's going to leave it over to Merker. Merker sends it in. That's over. That's TJ. TJ with it. He's got uh, to, uh, Yamada over here on that left side also. Yama, Yamada has a goal so far in this game. Going to send it deep down into Jacob Potts. Potts battling, trying to get a shot, but it's blocked immediately. Going to leave it up here to number 16, Beal. Beal leaves it over here to Yamada. Yamada sends it back to Beal. Over here to the right side. Trying to get something happen. That's Mendez. Mendez is going to send it all the way back to Beal. Oh, nice fake by Beal. <laughs> Beal across mid midfield. Down inside here to Dinsmore. Back over to Beal. Back over to Dinsmore. Dinsmore trying to find somebody open, and he's going to leave it, leave it back on top to O'Keefe. I figured out who he is now, even though he cut his hair on me. Oh, look at this. Yeah, nice split. Two defenders there. Shot, but soft shot, soft shot. Another shot there by uh, O'Keefe. And nothing. O'Keefe, I think, got, uh, yeah, he got kicked in the head. And we have a stoppage of play for an injury. He's not going to be happy about that. That was a borderline dangerous play there when you get your leg up above your chest there. I don't know. He went immediately down, didn't he? 
He did. I seen him go down, but then I was trying to keep track of the ball. Well, Keith is saying I'm bleeding, dude. So, yeah, he got hit up in that face region. I'm not sure who hit him because there's no penalty. No. No, I don't think uh, there was a call there. It looks like he's going to be Chicago ball here, but it uh, looks like the trainer's going to take a look at him here. Mercy Health trainer here. Oh, he's doing a great job. Mercy Health does a incredible job here for the athletes boys and girls here in the yeah, greater muskegon area that's trainer olivia she's at our uh, mona shores high school every once in a while okay she does a nice job john Rao, rock 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 him up i knew i shouldn't have said yeah he's got one of those last and i know john yep. so well he's just one of those last teams i always butcher and then you got ted quick T yep. tq Shot here by Muskegon that, or by Chicago that just went high. Yeah, you're not gonna beat uh, Connie out there like that. That's uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Credit him for at least trying to get something towards the goal, but yeah, it's ten feet too high. Three to nothing here, Muskegon Risers with the lead over the Chicago Mustangs, and uh, Connie th just threw that one out of bounds. That's his only miscue it seems like tonight. And we had TJ in there trying to. Uh, Block a pass, but that goes way up into the stands, did it not? So Chicago's still with, con still in control. Yeah, I love the way that Muskegon plays defense. They are just composed. They don't make many errors. Uh, their man marking is 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 body to body, and that's why they're having success tonight. What do you mean by man marking? Now, does that mean like just a tight man to man? Yeah. So like, in, okay. yeah, it's very similar to basketball, right? Yep. You know, there's zonal marking. There's you know zonal, zonal man marking, and uh, they're just following that man that they, whoever they have, and uh, uh, they're they're having a ton of success with it. And again, they're defending with their bodies. You okay. Know, not reaching legs out, and um, you know they are. It's a physical game. Had a little bit of a penalty there. I guess you, I, a foul, I should say, a foul by Muskegon. So Chicago's going to have the ball, trying to get a shot in on a Connie, but it just goes way, goes way over top. Chicago still maintains possession here as they get it back out to midfield. Danny Garcia trying to control it here. He might be one of the few guys whose name we do not have marked up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Marks on seems like everybody else. Garcia's going to leave it over to the keeper. Keeper kind of throws it deep, but down into that left end. Not a bad ball. Nope. Sends it in there. I tell you what, we got Edwards and Aldoni Mendez is battling down in there, and Mendez comes out of it. Shot there, though, by Garcia. Garcia stops it. Still on the Chicago end. Chicago trying to set something up here. The Mustangs are trying to get something going offensively, and that's just been brutal for them all night. Nice steal by TJ. Ball's loose again, back over to TJ. He kind of loses a handle on it, but he gets it back over to Crawford, right side. Crawford sends it deep down into Yamada. Yamada with a goal, but he's about one on three. Yamada, Yamada trying to make something happen. Oh, just misses. Just misses, so does TJ with a follow-up. Has it stolen away by a Mustang. Oh, it goes right back here to Chicago, right back to the Mustangs. Long pass going back down in. And Akani comes out of his net, sends a header way up into the stands. Great clearance there. 338 here left to go, 3 0 Muskegon. Dylan? Yeah. The other player that sticks out for me from Muskegon is TJ. He's been defending like like hack out there and uh, on transitions. He's in the attacking third just as quick as anybody else is. TJ looks way down, but just leaves it up short here to O'Keefe. O'Keefe sends it to Yamada, I believe. I'm back out here to front to Potts. Potts is kind of just throws it in on goal. Or kicks it in on goal, I should say. Yeah. He leaves it over here to Chicago. Emina. He's going to send it back to their keeper. Going to send it back over here to number 27 for them. Uh, or that is Richard, or Ricardo, I should say. Chicago with the ball deep down in their left corner. We send it back out here on the top to uh, Emina. Back into the midfield, back over the left side, down into that left corner. Back out on top, mid, kind of more towards the left field, back across to their right side. 
And Muskegon's inviting that ball to go back. It's it's totally fine yeah. that ball goes backwards like that. Almost like a reversal of the first game that we did together when Chicago was applying all the pressure. Yep. Stolen away here by Muskegon, but they just throw it down into their uh, defensive third. O'Keefe comes flying in off the bench. Long uh -oh. kick. Oh, it's, they found some Chicago, find somebody open. That's number eight for them. He's trying to figure something out. Blocked away on the kick. My goodness, one on, two on, three here. And well, Chicago turns it over. Three to nothing, 153 left to go here in the half. Chicago with the ball, Mustangs with the ball, trying to get it across midfield. They're kind of doing that, and they're going to quick sub here. A couple, I guess one guy thought they had two guys coming in, but only one. Chicago throws it down in on that left side. A couple of guys right there defensively, and Chicago Mustangs send it all the way back out here to midfield. The ball gets kicked and goes all the way down into the defensive third of the field here. Look at them, and the uh, must, uh, uh, risers walking up, Dylan. No, it, it seems like as soon as that ball is coming back, either Muskegon, when uh, Chicago's got the ball out at the middle third, they're just kind of waiting for it. But if that goes way back, they're high pressing up. They're trying to build that mistake that uh, Chicago's made a couple times already and uh, looking to press numbers forward. We have about one under one minute left to go here. And we have Aldoni Mendez has the ball coming up that left side. He has a lot of pressure on him. Throws one in on the keeper, but does not even make it there. Stolen away here by O'Keefe. O'Keefe coming in from that left side. And we have a shot on goal. It's high and wide right. Oh, that was TJ. Had a good look at it, and he just misfired on it. Another shot on goal here by O'Keefe. Another one, but no, it goes wide. That goes wide left. Another nice... Tell you what, nice takeaway here by TJ. TJ throws oh. it in, nice block. You're right, TJ's playing really well here down to yes. 20 seconds, first half. Do not give up a goal now, correct? No, 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 no. Yeah, you're down to 13 seconds, play it safe, dump that ball in. Yeah, just yeah, keep playing good defense. Don't give up anything cheap right now. Wow, a little push in the back, no call. Down to three, Aldo two, Aldoni was one. wondering what was happening with yep. that. And it's halftime here at Mercy Health Arena. The Muskegon Risers 3, the Chicago Mustangs, nothing. You're listening to Muskegon Risers soccer here from once again from Mercy Health. Our engineer, Billy Mann, Jesse King, and Matt Tarquette, they're all set here for the halftime show. So we will send it over to again. Once again, Muskegon 3, Chicago nothing. We're sending it over to Billy. We started uh, 1987, July of 1987, the company was founded here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We recruited Mario in to join our company as one of our uh, branches to serve the Muskegon community. He has grown to uh, five locations, uh, serving people up and down the lake shore. A lot of companies, they're sometimes in it more for themselves in closing that deal for just their monetary reward. And I think with Mario and his company, it's not just that. And I don't know if that always happens in our world. Hi, I'm Jenna Potts, your local Farm Bureau Insurance Specialist with the Durga Insurance Group. We are a company dedicated to serving only Michigan. We know you, we understand you, we protect you. All of us at the Durga Insurance Group live and work right in this area, so we're always nearby. Local agent, local service, and local savings. Come and see us today or visit our website, durgainsurancegroup.com, to find out more. Hello, this is Dimitri, the Russian hacker. Please disregard the following message from Catchmark Technologies. It will make my life easier. Thank you. If you own a business today, that business is exposed to digital risk. Data privacy, compliance, and of course, cyber attack risks are just a few that you may need to manage. If you don't have the staff or internal expertise to help mitigate risks your organization faces, call Catchmark Technologies at 616-384-4616.
do it again here, okay? All right, one door was locked, but we're going to try it again. Let's welcome to the Mercy Health Field, the Strikers. On the field, we have Waylon Hall, Eddie Riley, Ariana Riley, Phoenix Tagarzak, John Dalloway, and Andrew Hillebrandt. The coach of the Strikers is Kaylee Tagarzak. I'm on championship read, I think. Papers all over the place. All right, and again, Risers fans, the city of Muskegon, this is kind of exciting. The Muskegon Risers and the city of Muskegon were selected to host the MASL2 semifinals and championship games. The semifinals will be held on Friday, April the 8th. Games will be at 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. The championship game will be held on Sunday, April 10th at 3 p.m. All games will be played right here at Mercy Health Arena. Fans can purchase a ticket good for all three games for $25 for adults and $20 for kids. Individual game tickets for both April games are $14 for adults and $12 for kids. Tickets for the championship game on Sunday, April 10th, are $14 for adults and $12 for kids. So we hope to see you right back here at Mercy Health Arena for championship weekend April 8th and 10th, and we have a special deal. The first 20 people to get MASL2 championship weekend passes will receive a free ticket to the West Michigan Ironman game on April 9th. And the Muskegon Risers would like to wish a very happy birthday to the following Risers fan in the house with us tonight. Happy 20th birthday to Oscar, who's upstairs in the booth tonight. All right, happy birthday, Oscar, up there, and thanks for coming out and celebrating your special day with the Risers. And fans, following tonight's game, the Risers players and coaching staff will take a post-game lap around the field for fans to get autographs and pictures. Fans, however, will not be allowed on the field. Thank you. You know, the more educated we are. And the other thing, guys, is, which I'll talk about before the game Saturday, is we have to worry about us. It's hard enough to win in this league. I need everyone eligible to play in every game. I need guys to keep our lines going so I can't have people in the box. I can't have yellow cards, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, it's hard enough to win in this league. So we really need to work on us. Worry about us. Worry about your teammates. Don't worry about the guys on the other team. So, um, enough said about that. Any questions? Okay, let's get in three lines, okay? Mike, Vollmer, Cody, let's do three lines here. Let's get stretched out, and then, uh, and then we'll get going here, boys. My name is Ben Ritzma, uh, head coach of the Muskegon Risers Arena soccer, men's soccer team. We'll go 9v9 with goalies, 15 minutes, running clock. How do you see the season playing out? We got our work cut out for us, but I mean, we're not shying away from it by any means. I mean, we're going to be the hardest working team. I'm, I'm going to tell you that right now. And um, sometimes we're that, that hard work is going to turn into wins. Sometimes it's not, but um, I'm, I'm excited to see where we end up and how we compete against some of these bigger clubs. coach job, I guess the significant coaching job was being the JV boys 
soccer coach at Reese Puffer sure. under Eric Marcille. And then uh, he unfortunately passed away um, from cancer. And then I took over for him as the varsity boys and girls coach at Reese Puffer. So I did that for a long time, taught at Fruitport, coached at Reese Puffer, and then um, Mesquite Community College decided to make a, a varsity team for men's and women's soccer. Decided that would be pretty cool to go back and coach at Mesquite Community Strikers College. Strikers are working hard out there on, the on first that field. Club team. Yeah, got, got the job, number 24, Waylon Hall. Enjoyed it, met a lot number of new 22, players. Number 22, Addie Riley. Number 13, Ariana Riley. Number 12, there. Phoenix Tekarzik. Number 10, John Dalloway. And number nine, Andrew Hildebrand. Oh, I really want you to press. Second attackers, I really want you to press. Remember, they're going to post up, right? Michael, try to front them. Bones, try to front them. That post up guy. Okay, that's, okay. that's their whole game plan is post up, pass it into the post, and then make runs up. That's the whole game So I'm guessing by the fourth quarter, they might be tired. Okay? They're, they're going to be gassed, right? So remember, we all, we're going to start pressing, and then we're going to short shift it. Okay? Let's go, gentlemen. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, come on. And good evening, everyone. John Russell along with the Cal Van Single as we are getting set for the men's version of the Cincinnati Muskegon rivalry here, as it'll be the risers taking on the uh, swerve of Cincinnati. exciting half it has been. We are tied at three between Cincinnati and Muskegon. So the trend, Cal, continues yeah. as Cincinnati scores and then Muskegon yeah. is able to answer. I've had some great role models as coaches, I feel. My varsity coaches at Western Mission Christian High School, where I graduated from, I had Dave Ramirez as my soccer coach. 30 seconds left, 30 seconds left in the game. He basically started the soccer team at Western Mission Christian High School. And also my basketball coach, Jim Gorman. Um, and we're, we're talking both of these guys are Hall of Fame coaches in the high school ranks. So I don't know if a, a player has had better role models as coaches at a young age than I did with Dave Ramirez and, and Jim Gorman. And I think I've just taken bits and pieces from, from them and I've, I've morphed my own style, of course. All but right, I what do you say, Rises fans? Once Coach again, Ramirez let's give it up for the strikers. Coach Gorman, Waylon Hall, Addie yeah, Riley, today, Ariana Riley, Phoenix Takarzik, John Dalloway, Andrew Hillebrand. And the coach of the strikers is Kaylee Takarzak. That's what they're having a hard time defending. Okay, so like, you know, Steve, second attacker, he comes in here, he receives that boy, he receives a pass right here. Before that guy gets on him, whoever that defender is right here goes here, and then a nice little ball outside, and then we're through. Okay, so now that we've done it a couple times, and it, we've broken their lines with it a couple times, we just got to do it more often, okay? Does that make sense? We're just about set here for the uh, second half. All right, Rises fans, let's welcome back to the field for the second half. Your it, uh, Muskegon right Risers. Now. 
That should be good. Well, welcome back to Muskegon Risers Soccer. Three to nothing here. Risers over the Mustangs of Chicago. And Dylan, take us in the locker room. So uh, let's first start off uh, with the team that's on the floor right now with the Muskegon Risers. Um, again, Ben Rismo has got to be happy with the efforts. Uh, on all thirds of the field, they have been executing almost perfectly. And uh, Mayumbo is just a, a stud in the net. Uh, and when you have a start in the net, you're you're not worried a lot of stuff that's happening behind you. Um, and if you're in one of those five field players, uh, he's got to be pretty pleased. I think what will happen going forward is, uh, you know, Ben is going to take a little bit more of a uh, controlled approach to this game. We get into the fourth quarter, you're up three goals or more. Um, at that time, it's just playing smart soccer and and making sure that uh, you know you limit errors that will cost you goals. And then to flip it on the on the Chicago side, uh, they they've had some good looks, they've had some some decent opportunities, but uh, nothing that's gone past my umbo. At times, I think that uh, Chicago is trying to get a little bit too cute with the ball. Um, I think two of the three of their goals have come off of turnovers, uh, where they just didn't release it out quick enough. Uh, they didn't get that outlet. They didn't find that outlet, uh, and uh, it resulted in a turnover and. When Muskegon's pressing as high as they are, uh, turnovers happen, that ball's going to come right back down your throat. So uh, at, that's what happened. At what point does Chicago need a goal by? I mean, I, I know the quickest thing, the easy yeah, thing to say it was, goal, well, right away. Right but, away, but yeah. no, I mean, they, you know, it's not panic. I mean, even if it's a 3-0 game at the end of the quarter, it's you probably still should panic. You know, as we saw in that, that third quarter is how quick goals can happen. Uh, they can happen, and then they can happen in bunches, too. Uh, the worst thing that Chicago can do is try to go out and get three. Right? There's, there's nothing out there that will get you three goals in one opportunity. Um, it's got to be one at a time. It's got to be uh, building off of, of, of one success. And, uh, you know, if you're a Muskegon, you got to try to stop that. But uh, Chicago's really got to try to get something forward. And, again, I, it doesn't have to even be this quarter, but uh, I don't think it would be a failure if it was 3-0 going into the fourth. Uh, but uh, the quicker the better. And really, Muskegon, their two best players are not in the lineup due to knee injuries. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy to think that they're playing this well without you know what you know what would be considered two of their best players. Uh, you know, uh, Flores, who has had I think he's top three in the league for goals, mm -hmm. with, uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, Zelo was I think that was the game that we we announced against uh, Chicago last time where he went out. Um, has also been out. So, you know, it's it, great testament to the players that are on the bench and the players that Coach Ritzma is bringing in because uh, I don't see any holes. Yeah, gotcha. So here's a question. All right, high school, I mean, it, it's been well past 15 minutes now for halftime. And at the 15-minute mark, Chicago just walks out, 
and they just start warming up. Why do they get the extra time in high school? Yes. You're not, you know, that would, that's a no-go. Fashionably late. I don't yeah. know. Maybe you saw a couple more concessions waiting. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that doesn't seem like the refs are trying to uh, to move this thing along. And I don't know if that's uh, mind games or not, but uh, we'll see. It doesn't seem like Muskegon's going to be too phased by it. So. No. Well, okay. We're back underway, and Chicago has the ball. Three to nothing, Risers with the lead. And boy, well, Chicago is going to be happy just to, but the ball's going the wrong way, is it not here for the Mustangs? Great defensive pressure here by the Risers. This is that high pressure that I was talking about. Be a little bit of a turnover and a trip and a whistle. So it's going to be a foul. Oh. So what's happening here? Didn't that, we had, we had an old, official. There's a lot of animated We're, stuff going on right there now. There is. Man, we had an official run over a player. He ringing over Edwards by accident. <laughs> Not really sure what that was. I think it was a foul, though. I don't think Edwards knew either. No, I don't think he did. So here we go, back underway. Nice little footwork out there by uh, Dutcher. Dutcher's going to leave it back out here on top, sends it back in. Oh, and we're going to try to get a shot by Mendez, but it's going to go high off the net. Brandon Edwards. Our Brandon, yeah, Edwards with a nice shot there. Chicago trying to advance, but we're going to have uh, T we're going to have Moses Crawford right there to take it away. But once again, another turnover here uh -oh. by the risers. We had a uh, Chicago guy coming in right off the bench, but he could not get the ball and turn and go. Mustangs with the ball deep down in their far corner. Turnover here by them. Mendez with the Alex Mendez gets the steal. Chicago turns it back. Sorry, Muskegon turns it back over to Chicago. Chicago with the ball. Three to nothing here. 13-40 here in the third quarter. Chicago working so hard at trying to get something going on. Gomez with the ball, but he turns it over. Going to leave it over here to uh, Beal. And oh. we have a whistle. Uh-oh. What happened? I was looking at Beagle down here. Yeah, it was something after the play. And they need a trainer. Yeah. He get the wind knocked out of him? I think so. Uh, O'Keefe's not having any of that. O'Keefe is sticking up for his guy, is he not? Yeah, yeah I think uh, he got the wind knocked out. Oh, and we're going to have a penalty. All right, not this guy. This guy here is coming to the bench. Yeah, number 23, we got Murillo. Uh, yep, Murillo. Martin Murillo. And good to see. Here we go. Alex Mendez pops back up. He's going to be okay. I think that was he just kind of got the wind knocked out of him, did yeah. he not? By Mur Mur Murillo must have taken a shot at him in that chest region where nobody was looking. I did not yeah. even see him go down. I seen I, Beal with the ball. Yeah, I was following the play as well. Yeah. That already sold that really well. One of the two. <laughs> that, that he did. O'Keefe with the ball, going to leave it over here to the right side to TJ, back down in over to Beal, back out here on top to cheat TJ, back over to O'Keefe. O'Keefe to TJ. TJ trying to advance, back over to O'Keefe. You have a shot, but that's not going to go anywhere. Nice block out front there by somebody, and we have a whistle. But we got a lot of whistles here in the first two minutes, do we not? A lot of stoppages. Which I think that's going to be in the favor of Muskegon yep. if that continues. Yep. That was a foul on uh, O'Keefe. I think he said that's his third one already. CJ with the ball. We have a three on two. If they hurry, over to O'Keefe. Shot, but wide left. Yeah. Muskegon still with the ball out front here to Calabrese. Calabrese over left side to Mendez. Over to O'Keefe deep in that corner. Stolen away here by Chicago. Chicago still with it. <laughs> two bounce passes off the ball, and here we go. We have a breakaway. We have a two-on-three here. Chicago with the ball moving towards that, uh, towards the net. Shot. Right. Score! And it went off of O'Keefe. I think Akani had the block, but it went off of him, but hit O'Keefe, and it bounced in. Yeah, it was a bad ricochet there. But you, th you put balls on net like that, and sometimes that's, that's going to be the difference maker. Just like that. Now it's three to one. And we talked at halftime about, you know, you want to get that score right away to kind of get off that uh, being shut out. And now they are. Chicago has a little life in them now. Yeah, that shows you can do it. And they, they did that shorthanded too. Yes, they did. 
Now he's still in the, well he he's still in the box yet for another yep. minute four, right? Yep. Yeah, good point. Thank you for that. It'd be good to see if Muskegon can get one back here on this. So he has to stay in. Oh, that's right. Yeah, wrong team scored. My bad. I was thinking he could come out, but no, he's going to well, stay in. <laughs> continue to get punished for uh, yeah. doing something good there. Three to one here, 12.35 left to go here, third quarter. Muskegon three, Chicago one. TJ's out there. Calabrese's out there. O'Keefe is out there. Um, Yamada's out there. That'd be nice here if Muskegon could answer. Why the, why the stoppage of play? I think you they're know? double checking to make sure that the player has to stay in. Unless something happened, I don't. I'm learning the game as I go, Dylan. Thank yeah, you. I don't, they're talking to the goal scorer right now. Who was, I'm trying to think what the number was here. But, uh, yeah, yeah, quite the disagreement on the far side with the referees and the Chicago staff here. Yeah, the official walks away down the board, and the uh, and the the coach is following him right with him. So she, Riser's back with the ball. It's TJ in the middle. Leaves it over there to, to O'Keefe. Going to go down in to number seven. That's Alda, uh, Mendez. Mendez trying to get a shot on goal. Once again, Muskegon with the advantage. Just cannot get a good shot on goal here so far. No. Going to go back down into that left corner. Got a couple of guys battling down in there. That's uh, Yamada. Yamada battling with a bunch of guys. O'Keefe's going to leave it over here to number 12. That's for for Kano. Back out here to TJ. TJ across to O'Keefe. Good ball. Yep. Going to send it back over to trying to get it to the middle. 15 should, seconds left in the power play here. Ball goes to the right side over here to TJ. And once again, it goes kicked out of bounds. <coughs> so three to one here. Muskegon still with the lead down to 11.38 third quarter. It's been a, after kind of a quick, smooth second quarter. I mean, where time was moving, this thing has been well, sluggish. Going to get a shot over here by O'Keefe. And it was right to the keeper and the keeper with a long throw here. But Muskegon's going to be able to run it down here. Got to be careful they don't turn it over. And they did. They kicked it out of bounds. That's about all I can do with that ball. And it's going to be a turnover and result mm -hmm. in the same thing that just happened on the other end yep. here. So Chicago's going to have the ball. 11.28 left to go here, third quarter. They're going to be right out in front of the net, are they not? Yeah, lots of line yeah. switches here, too, by both teams. That's Acosta, number eight. They're a dangerous player. Leo Acosta. Kick goes over to the right side. They get a shot. A nice block by Okani. Great save. Ball's tied up in that right corner. O'Keefe might come out of there with it. He does. He does not have the numbers, though, but he's battling. Sends it deep down into that into that corner. Colin O'Keefe doing a great job. Oh. O'Keefe almost had a steal for a shot, but he did not. Dylan? That was good pressure. Here we go. We're going to see Yeah, stolen away here. Yeah. And we're going to have a foul. That's well done by Muskegon. Now, Muskegon's looked their best when they are getting out in space, getting out and running. Um, you know, that sitting back, and, you know, you saw the kind of stagnant power play there that, you know, didn't result in much. Uh, that's it's not their game. Mm -hmm. Back underway here so momentarily. Potts will have the ball, and here we go. Potts leaves it down in there to uh, Dinsmore. Dinsmore tries a shot, and the ball's going to go out of bounds again. And once again, Potts. It's a nice save by the Chicago keeper there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ball is just kind of out here in the middle. Nobody has control. And finally now, Muskegon has control. Had her here by a Mustang. And we have two guys who went for it. Both of them hit the deck. Muske Chicago comes out of here, though, with the ball. Oh. Wow, I tell you what, a little bit of contact, no call. Chicago trying to get a shot on goal. Cannot. Stolen away here by Muskegon. The ball goes out of bounds. Man, there is no flow. I can't no, get a flow. Gonna, I mean, I this is like, say, wow. Does it seem like it's kind of just a scattered mess right now? Yeah. 
We're only, we're not even five minutes in. No, I know. I, I know I can feel it. Like, I'm like, man, I'm trying to get a flow going here. Help me out, guys. Chicago with the ball. Sends it over mid, over just inside half midfield. They're trying to get something set up, and it's just kind of kicking it around. Now they do. They're trying to get something set up. Number 10 over there is with it, moving it around. Good pressure there by Crawford. Yeah, really good defense. Man, Muskegon just keeps pushing Chicago back. Much different than what it was the game that we did about a month or six weeks yeah. ago. Good ball in here. Chicago now the ball trying to make something happen over here. Number 23, Murillo. Murillo with a shot on goal, but blocked by Crawford, I believe. And they're going to reset again all the way back out here on top to Lopez. Good defense. Boy, I tell you what, Muskegon just pushing, pushing, trying to make something happen. Uh-oh. They got him coming in on oh. the right side, but I'll tell you what, number two there, Lopez was late. He's shot. wide open, though. I'm, he I'm, was. I'm glad that ball didn't connect. And, and the ball goes out of bounds. O'Keefe was not happy with Akani. No. It was a long pass. It went out of bounds. I'm like, you know, if I'm O'Keefe, I'm like going, dude, I'm not barking at him. He's no. your, I think he's your player of the game so, so far. So far, yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, he's been a stud in the back. Yeah, Muskegon's got to find a little bit more rhythm here because they are out of sorts a little bit. Ball goes in deep here in the Chicago end. That's number 17 with it, Matthew. He kind of loses control, sends it back out here up on top to Emina. Back down into Matthew over here, and then Akani comes, comes over and scoops it up. He's going to leave it over here. Nice little roll out here by Akani. That's and we're going to have a foul. Yep. So, That's an easy one to call. Yep. So Muskegon's going to have the ball just about right in front of their bench at midfield, and that's going to be Edwards on the kick. Brandon Edwards sends it deep down into that corner. Dutcher down there. Dutcher hasn't been in there for a while. Oh, I tell you what, a little backwards kick almost got in there. Then a little bit of a header there by uh, TJ. Nice job on the header. Just about got it. That was a crafty, crafty little touch there. That was, was it not? A little backwards kick. Oh. Ricardo, their uh, keeper here for Chicago. He threw, he threw it out, but he threw it out of bounds. And Muskegon still in possession. Throw it down into this right corner. A couple guys hanging on to each other and another whistle. Oh, it's getting chippy now. I thought there was a whistle, and there it is was, a whistle. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Oh, boy. Yeah, chippy's the... Uh, <laughs> And you, don't you think if you're Chicago, you want to try to clean that up and just focus on your offense? And Yeah, unless I mean, you, you think it's getting into Muskegon's head. Okay. Which, which I don't think it is. Well, then Muskegon's still the next 3-1 lead here, but yep. Chicago did score here in the third quarter to, you know, to kind of get that one goal they have so far. Trying to get something going out front here by Acosta for Chicago. Stolen away here by Muskegon. It's stolen back by by Chicago. Going to leave it down in here to Gomez. Gomez has it taken away. Another kick in there. I tell you what, Acosta is starting to uh, flex his muscle. He's yes. starting to knock some guys down. Accidentally almost turned it over here. Uh, Yamada did with a backwards kick. Oh, boy. And, man, I, they are just not what? playing well offensively. Long kick goes right to the Chicago keeper. Going to come right back, oh. though, to Muskegon. Now we have a three on three. Going to leave it to O'Keefe. Going to leave it up here to Dinsmore. Oh. oh, nice shot on goal, but leave, but it got blocked. That was an absolute beautiful pass by Dinsmore there. Multiple guys trying to get the ball, and finally Chicago comes away with it. Down to 6:51 left to go. Three to one here, Muskegon with the lead. A little bit of subbing here going on for uh, Chicago. Yeah, I think uh, the the style of play that Chicago's playing actually working a little bit in their favor. They're playing a little bit more physical, pressing the issue a little bit more. Okay. Muskegon with the ball just across uh, midcourt, and he's throwing it down, and no call. Uh, call it late, but yeah, that's that's the right call. I was starting to win, but I'm looking. I'm looking at it, going, uh, that's a foul. He just wrapped him up and took him down, but yeah, 
Mendez played that perfectly though. He knew he put his body right into that defender, turned him as soon as he got free. He had no choice but to rip him down. Schmidt in there. Good to see that, Michael Schmidt. As he throws it into that right corner with the keeper right there to pick it up. He, keeps, he kicks it out. And it's gonna be a turnover here. Muskegon's gonna have the ball again over here to Potts. Potts is gonna leave it out. I think that's a Frank. Uh, it is, that's Calabrese. We got a whole lot of stuff. You know, Calabrese's back in there. That's the first time he's been in there in a while. A little bit of a tie up here, Potts. Boy, he's got quick feet, doesn't yes, he? Yes, he does. Over to TJ Crawford. Now that's gotta be a and that's a battle. That's a whole lot of extracurricular oh, stuff going on yeah. right there. This is football, you don't think anything. The no. other football, you don't think much of it, but yep. this is this type of football, and yeah. Tell you what, Muskegon now just cannot. I'm with you, I just think they're a little bit out of sync here offensively. Yep. But like you said, maybe the defense, the chippy defense. Yep. For Chicago, has something to do with that. Sometimes when you're more worried about somebody following you or you know coming at your ankles or you know hitting you from the side, you you, you lose your first touch, you lose your vision downfield, you lose a lot of things, and it can be an advantage. Mm -hmm. And once That's again, great. you know, Muskegon lost its best player to this team about a month ago. Yep. And Zelo went down with a wicked knee injury. Now, which I have learned is not his first of his career. Okay. He's had some knee injuries before, so. That's sad to see that stuff happen. Yeah. yeah Zelo out of Spring Lake, then went to Davenport to play. Great player. Mm-hmm. That was a good dummy run there. That was. I was like, wait, you missed the whole thing. That good dummy run. I like that. Good call on that. Thank you for that. Shot, long shot here by number 16. Now that's Beal. And we're going to have another whistle. You got a Snickers bar? Because we're not going anywhere no, for a while. No, we're not. This is going to end up being a really good game, I think. 3-1, to one, 4.52 left to go here in the uh, third quarter. Muskegon finds an answer here to get a goal. I think you know the you can kind of exhale a little bit because they're you can tell they're on pins and needles right now. Yeah, they kind of are because like you said, two to two. I mean, they've played four times. Each team has won two. Shot, but that's wide, wide right here. The keeper, TJ, with it. Shot, but that's blocked. Shot, score. <laughs> Colin O'Keefe with a kick from the left side for the goal. Dylan? Yeah, it was a great finish. Again, a, a poor clearance on Chicago's end, and ball gets popped out uh, right to his left foot, and he finds the back of the net. Well, it kind of came quickly, didn't it? Very quick. Hey, that's, that's what Muskegon needed right yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. Like yeah, it was a little bit, you know, you kind of finished with your... Um, you know, helping out with the color and kind of got turned over and it went over to O'Keefe and they found him and man, just like that. Boom, in their corner, kick good. Well, O'Keefe's been a monster up top. Uh, two goals already and, you know, both kind of resulting in that same situation, a turnover. It's not even the right place in the right time because he's putting his, he, you know, he's a smart enough player to put himself in position where he thinks that ball's going to be and both times he did it. So is that just one of those that you maybe have a play set up or you see the turnover there and you're like, you know, I think the ball's just going to end up back here. And so you go there and you get lucky and it does. I think it's just high pressure. You put that, you put that pressure on their defense and, you know, you're, you're hoping that they force that error and you know where that error is going to happen and where that ball is going to end up. And, uh, again, O'Keefe's a smart enough player to know. Okay, 4-1 to one now, 4 433 left to go here, third quarter. What's the Chicago coach saying? Yeah. You know, you were starting to get into their mind a little bit, like yeah. you were talking about maybe, Gosh. you know, that that's their tempo was maybe starting to, to uh, drive Muskegon nuts. What, what, what's he saying now? I don't know. They look kind of deflated right now, but, you know, you if, if they would have got that second goal and it's 3-2, to two, it's a completely different game mm -hmm. uh, than this three-goal cushion. But if you're Chicago, I think you just continue the same plan. Uh, again, they're... The goal came off of high pressure, a little bit of a mistake from uh, Chicago, but that's all a result of Muskegon and what they're doing. So. Gotcha. 
Well, Chicago has a ball, but just a long kick down into Akani. He throws it all the way back down to the other end. Got the big man down in there, Alex Mendez, battling. He hits the deck again. Wants a, wants a foul, but not going to happen. Stolen away here he might by... Might have to uh, fall a little bit harder than yeah, that next time. Yeah. Yeah, Mendez is going to try to leave it to Dinsmore. That's going to be a card on number four, I think. Yep, Gomez. So, so I think that was a direct result of what happened. Oh, look at up front. Two and uh, we almost had a fight. Wow, this is getting chippy. This is now what Ben Rizmo wants. Get back. Get back. Yeah, I tell you what, Alex Lopez went after a Muskegon guy. Now he's pointing and barking at him. Yeah. That was well after the play. I mean, there was a whistle. I just happened to glance back to kind of see who's coming in. As soon as you said that, I turned and I don't know what happened. I saw Gomez walk into the penalty yeah. box here. Yep. I just, you know, I see the ball's going to be here. I'm watching the blue car come up. I glance to see if there's anybody coming in. And all of a sudden, boom, yeah, he was barking and pushing. Yeah, my fear is that if uh, Muskegon continues to pedal on the gas, this thing could get out of hand. And I hope the refs take control of it because there's a lot of stuff happening that we're not seeing, you know, after the play that, yeah. you know, players falling down and, you know, these tackles and, uh, you know, you, you don't want to see that. No. Yeah, you know, a lot of kids in here watching. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, a lot of youth in here. Shot on goal, but just got blocked here by a Chicago guy. A little bit of a header here. I tell you what, they ought to be careful. Chicago almost came out of that with a ball. From Calabrese has it. Let's see what, Muske Leaves it. Let's see what Muskegon does this time yeah. on there. Calabrese has it, leaves it over to Mendez. And then over to Crot, no, over to TJ. Gonna leave it over here to O'Keefe. Gonna go back over to TJ. Almost wanna, like they wanna run a delay, yeah. work on that clock a little bit. Shot, uh, oh, by, by O'Keefe quickly. Nice shot by their keeper to knock it out of there. That was a great shot, oh, here we go. Shot. Oh, another one missed on. It went off the head of uh, TJ, I think. I'm glad he's Man. all right. That was wicked. The <laughs> shot hit the kind of a corner on the post and hit TJ right smack on the top of the head. That was an absolute seed of a shot. <laughs> it was. Wow. So I tell you, TJ in there just playing some really good defense. And that's going to go over to Alex Mendez. Mendez battling with a Chicago guy. Now we're going to have a foul by Alex. Yeah, Coach Rich is telling him to get back. There's no sense of what do we got. A minute left, yeah. three minutes left three. in the quarter. Yeah, 3.03. And you kind of don't want to like lean on guys and start pushing them, making them matter. They're already mad, yeah. Chicago is. Yeah. Play them clean and maybe they'll settle down a little bit. Maybe not, I don't know. But... Or Muskegon kind of advancing here, stolen away, but it's going to go right back to TJ. Muskegon trying to set something oh, up, kick good, it in, and then in, in here to Aldoni Mendez, and it goes to the keeper. It's a great ball by TJ. Yeah. Split the defense, find the person on the point. Keeper throws it. It's knocked out of bounds, though, by TJ. Their keeper does not have the big arm that Akani does. No. Connie Mayumbo, big leg, big arm. Ooh, great hands. Yeah, he's, he's, been, he's been my player of the game here so far. He's been, he's been amazing. Chicago trying to get something happen. Blocked there, though, by O'Keefe. He's going to leave it over here to that left side. Back over here to uh, Merker. Merker to O'Keefe. O'Keefe's got a lot, logged a lot of minutes here the second yes, he half. Has quality minutes, yep. too. He's going to leave it in here to the guy from Ch Japan, Yamada. A little shot, but it went wide. Centering pass. Going to go back out to O'Keefe. Throws it in on the goal. Nobody's there, kind of. And that's going to go back up top to a Merker. Back over to O'Keefe. Back over to Merker. Back to O'Keefe. 138 left to go third quarter. Back over to Merker. I'm kind of just playing take keep away, aren't we? Yeah, at this point, it's, yeah. especially if uh, uh, Chicago's not going to start pressing forward and, and putting man's on, or man on you, you, you might as well. Chicago with a steal, 120 left to go third quarter. 
They have a hard time advancing the ball. They are. It's a nice slip ball yep. through there. A little bit of action going on now. Oh, they had a little two on three going, but it turned over and the ball goes. I thought it was heading out of bounds, didn't you? Yeah. By yeah, the way, it, it took off, but it stayed in play. Uh, good ball here. Yep. Out of reach of the keeper. Yep. Dinsmore just throws it way back down in, down to 50 seconds, third quarter. Going to get left at a turnover here by, by Chicago. We got a little bit of battle going on. Yamada on a Chicago guy. Yamada comes out of there, loses it. Dinsmore right there. O'Keefe right there. And Chicago maintains the ball. Down to 34 seconds. Chicago trying to get something going offensively. Number eight out there, Acosta. O'Keefe, who was just a look. on him again. Look at that. Acosta was brilliant in that game, that game we did about a month ago, yes. but they have really stymied him so far tonight. Chicago way down in that right end now, down to about 14 seconds, oh, yeah. easy kick. The county just scoops it up. I could have grabbed that one. And the county's hurt. What happened to a county? That was, e that was his easiest, that was easy. He's hurting. That's like a hip. Yeah. And that's the end of the third quarter and we got to watch. A county yeah, just goes to the cramp, ground. Man. You're right. It should have been. Shouldn't even been uh, going to the floor and catch that. But. Yeah, I mean it was. I don't know. I don't know what that was. Anyway, end of the third. Muskegon four, Chicago one. We're sending it over to Billy. Billy. Van Dyke Mortgage. We, you know, we started uh, 1987, July of 1987. The company was founded here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We recruited Mario in to join our company as one of our uh, branches to serve the Muskegon community. He has grown to uh, five locations, uh, serving people up and down the lake shore. A lot of companies, they're sometimes in it more for themselves and closing that deal for just their monetary reward. And I think with Mario and his company, it's not just that. And I don't know if that always happens in our world. Hi, I'm Jenna Potts, your local Farm Bureau insurance specialist with the Durga Insurance Group. We are a company dedicated to serving only Michigan. We know you, we understand you, we protect you. All of us at the Durga Insurance Group live and work right in this area, so we're always nearby. Local agent, local service, and local savings. Come and see us today or visit our website, durgainsurancegroup.com, to find out more. If you are a business owner, you know that while necessary, technology can be confusing, complex, expensive, and a frustrating endeavor. Catchmark Technologies can help make that technology simple and clean so that your business can easily get its product or service to the market. Whether you need technical support, structured cabling, camera systems, cybersecurity, or digital media advice, Catchmark Technologies is your one-stop tech service shop. Shoot us a call at 616-384-4616, visit our website at catchmarkit.com, or stop into one of our offices in Grand Rapids or Whitehall. Catchmark And we're back here at Muskegon Mercy Health Arena where the Risers, Muskegon Risers, have a 3-1, to one, I'm sorry, 4-1 to one lead here over the Chicago Mustangs. Take a look here for the Risers. First, let's talk about our sponsors who make this all happen here tonight. The sponsors tonight, Van Dyke Mortgage, Catchmark Sports, Durga Insurance, and PCN Network, the four sponsors who are sponsoring this game tonight. I'm Cal Van Single. Dylan Darga is helping me with the uh, color here tonight, doing a great job, and I'm learning things, so thank you for teaching the old farmer here. <laughs> we have Lee Andrews on the PA. Once again, Matt Schmitz, our uh, general manager, head coach here for Muskegon's Ben Ritzman. Our engineers tonight, Billy Mann, Jesse King, and Matt Tarkat. We cannot do this game without those three guys. appreciate them so much. So, question, Akani. My umbo, is he going to be able to go in the fourth quarter? I, I, I mean, I got to imagine he'd have to uh, have some sort of serious injury for him to, uh, Ben Richmond not to put him back in here. Uh, but I know Vomero would be ready, though, if, uh, if called on. So let's see what happens. And he did go out and get a little work here in between, in between uh, the third and the fourth quarter here. Yeah. Let's see. All right, here. start of the fourth quarter. Chicago down three to one, and they're a little chippy, and they're not happy. Yep. Yeah, what no. are they, well, they, they? They need to start pressing now. Okay. They need to, uh, you know, their one goal has gone off, come off a, cor uh, a counter when they were down a man, which is kind of odd to think. And, uh, uh, you know, they're not getting much going forward. So uh, you press numbers forward, and, and that's going to leave your vulnerable in the back. Uh, but that's something, I mean, this playoff game. It's, it's lose and go home and your season's done uh, or go down fighting. So. so they're down three to tie it, not insurmountable. 
but really they can't really commit any bad penalties no. because then they're just going to, you know, there's going to be a, um, oh, geez, um, man advantage here for Muskegon. Yep. So they got to play smart also. Yeah, Muskegon's probably just going to look to work this ball around as much as possible, kill some of that clock, limit mistakes, uh, and then counter when they can. Well, Muskegon already here doing a nice job. Just about took 30 seconds off the clock here. Just by doing that same thing, just kicking it around. Four to one, underway here in that fourth quarter, about 425 here. I'm sorry, 1425. We'll have to go. Chicago with the ball, trying to get something going offensively. And we're going to have a trip. That's an easy call. That was, uh, I think that was Calabrese. Just kind of took him down. How did help him up, but it's like, why do you do that even? <laughs> yeah, you're going to have eyes on you when you go down like that on the yeah. floor. That's one of those, like, everybody's watching. Yep. You know, you know what's going to happen. CJ Crawford doing a nice job with a nice steal here. Boy, slow kick, though, across, and they're still going to maintain possession. Calabrese tied up with a Mustang. There's still a little bit of a battle. Oh, it's not good for Muskegon. What happened? They got a blue card. Well, oh, by Calabrese? Yep. It's a two-minute or four-minute penalty? Two-minute penalty. Two-minute penalty. So uh, Muskegon's been pretty stagnant on their uh, attacking end on their power play. Let's hope that they can uh, you know, step it up here on their defensive one. Mm -hmm. Four to one here, fourth quarter, 13.57 left to go. I'm Calvin Single. Dylan Darga helping out tonight, doing a great job teaching the old farmer <laughs> a little bit about the game of soccer. It's a, it's a fun game. It's an easy game to learn, though. If you give me a tractor, I can learn tractors <laughs> probably easier than this. <laughs> Mustangs with the ball. They got out in the middle over here to that right side out here. Trying to make something happen. They got Alex Gomez over here on that. Oh, nice oh. shot by. Great shot by Chicago. Now, Connie doing a nice job of uh, blocking another one. Here comes another shot. It's way high, oh, though. Connie needs a sub. He's coming out. He was waving for it after that save. Yeah, he's dinged. He's dinged. He had, and like you said, talk, talk to us about when he, he kind of dove down there. Tell us yeah, about I that Yeah, I don't play. know if it was just, because it looked like a simple basket catch that he went to the ground with and uh, just going to kind of stall some time. But um, I don't know what happened, if he fell wrong or, or what happened. But it looks like Vollmer's coming in. We got a trainer coming out to check on him again. Uh, we were going to say at, at halftime it was going to have to be something drastic to get him out of this game, and I can't imagine that it's just something, just a little nick. Mm -hmm. Michael Vollmer is going to come in and, uh, you know, has played some more maybe limited minutes so far in this season. What can you tell us about Michael? Uh, Vollmer, so he's the uh, varsity boys coach at East Grand Rapids High School. Uh, he's been around the game. He's been with the risers for a long time. Uh, he plays a lot of uh, international beach soccer, too, and is a goalie there. Um, Grand Haven graduate, played at Kelvin College. Uh, he, he knows the game. He's, okay. He's the savvy veteran on the team. Um, you know, if, if you're going to have somebody come on and, uh, you know, kind of clinch this first playoff game at home, uh, no better person than Michael Vollmer. Okay. Thank you. Great analogy. Thank you. That's why you make the big bucks here, <laughs> yeah, by the exactly. way. Exactly. You might get a Snickers bar afterwards. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> so Vollmer with a nice throw. Nice throw out by Vollmer. Ends up going all the way back to their keeper as uh, Dinsmore does the header. Chicago with the ball now. 13 and a half minutes left to go. Muskegon 4-1 to one here. Chicago's got to get something going offensively. Go ahead. See what the penalty kill looks like here for Muskegon. Okay. But they, they haven't had one yet. There was a 4v4 situation earlier, but not a 4v5. So we'll see what happens. Boy, Muskegon doing a nice job of really taking any kick away. And they're uh, Chicago trying to get lined up for that big kick, but looks like here they're blocking all the lanes. Dean's just really kind of, that's Lop or that's Garcia throws one in. That's way, that's going to be wide left. Yeah, if you're Muskegon, you'll invite that. That's fine. Yeah, no. Shot another shot, but high, high, high left. Same, that one almost oh. went into Rad Dad. Yeah, you think it did? <laughs> Someone's got a free ball. Yep. That's like the foul ball that goes way up in the left field. <laughs> they might not give that back. No. Uh -oh. oh, here it comes. Oh, be careful now. Probably knocked over somebody's <laughs> beverage. <laughs> knocked over some great food from Rad Dance. Yeah. 
So here we go, back underway. Vollmer with the throw. Nice little throw there. The problem is it went to a Mustang. Chicago in control, out front here. Number four, that's Gomez. Gomez is going to leave it over there to Garcia. Back over to Garcia. It's going to go back over to Gomez. Gomez trying to figure out what to do with it. Goes right, goes to that left side. He's looking, but it's back out on top here. Lopez, Garcia. They're slowly getting closer, are they not? Oh, the ball went rolled right through there. And it's goal! Score, Chicago. Number 10 for them. Yeah, there's nothing you can do there if you're Vollmer. You know, that ball earlier rolled right through there and got in. You know, there was really no kick attempt that time. It came th rolling right back, and somebody got it in. And look at this, Mike Schmidt. There, I'm sorry, Ben Richmond says, whoa, boys, we need a timeout yep. quickly yep. and takes a timeout. So what's he telling these guys? Hey, <laughs> This is, this is where this thing could turn sour real quick. So your safety net in the back uh, is gone. Uh, you got somebody coming in and fill shoes that does, is going to do a good job. But, um, you know, you, you kind of just got to hit the reset button. Hey, everything's been working. Uh, we're going to continue to work on uh, playing man mark defense. We're out of we're out of the 4v5 now. Uh, that's, that's, let's continue to play uh, the quality soccer that we've been playing. All right, now Vollmer, he gives up a goal. and gives one up pretty quickly here. Does that do anything to him psychologically, even uh, though really there wasn't much he could do about that? There's nothing he can do about that, and he's been around the game long enough where he knows that. You know, if he hit that one between his legs or something bounced off his hands and went back in, then that could affect your psyche a little bit. But, uh, yeah, that's just, you know, you're a man down, you come in, and, uh, you know, kudos to Chicago there. That was a beautiful play, so. Mm-hmm. Chicago now goes, they got life. Yes. They got some life back. Even though it goes back to five on five, they got some life. What's Chicago's coach telling those guys? Keep pressing. Keep pressing. I don't know if you try to draw another foul. You keep playing physical like you've been playing. Because um, uh, that works. Uh, but uh, you got to keep pressing. And, again, if that if that's to sacrifice somebody from the back to go forward uh, and you're going to get countered on, that's, it's got to be. But maybe not so much in the next five minutes, but – this gets down below 10, eight minutes, uh, then you'll start pressing forward. If this gets to, if it stays at 4-2 for a while, when does Chicago pull their goalie? At what minute mark do you think? Ooh, I, you know, we see that happen a couple of times. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if you're down two goals, it's probably not, you're not going to see it happen. But uh, maybe, I don't know. Okay. I just think you're leaving yourself susceptible, but, you know, you got to get numbers for them. And okay. Chicago hasn't really done a great job of possessing the ball, and what you're going to need, yeah, there's a foul there. Yeah. Uh, well, that's a late call. That's very late. There's a blue card coming out. So now Muskegon's going to go on the offense with a man advantage. He's got his hand in his pocket at least. Let's see what happens. But I haven't seen it yet of you. No. Uh-oh. No, no, no blue card? I guess not i mean that was kind of blatant enough he had his hand in his pocket you thought he was, you thought it was coming out i maybe, maybe the chicago's coach just <laughs> caught, to, talked him right out of it which hey they were right there i don't see why not okay shot goes in here or i'm not getting not goes in the net goes down into that left corner muskegon trying to get something happen going on that offensive end they've been just a little quiet only one goal here so far this whole second half Ball comes back out to midfield in the middle third. Stole, oh, I tell you what, uh, if Franco could have got a good run on that, he would have had that. Would have been one-on-one -on -one going the other way. Muskegon trying to get something going offensively. They have maintained control here. Yes, they for about have. For that last 30, 45 seconds, ball goes high in the air. Comes back down. It's going to be Chicago ball, 42, 11, 18. Left to go here, fourth quarter. Michael Schmidt comes back in. Well, we're going to give it to the risers here. Really? Uh, huh, okay. That surprises me, but... Yeah. TJ's going to be in on... Is it going to be TJ or Potts? It looks like Potts is going to. Nope, it's going to be TJ. The kick goes towards oh. the net. Oh, just swinging a miss in there by another riser. That was uh, Mendez, Alex Mendez. And the ball is cleared all the way down here to Fulmer. Fulmer, Fulmer out of the box, or he's got to kick it all the way back, and that's going to go all the way back almost 
to Muskegon's keeper, and it does. Oh, oh getting ready to get stolen away. Great pressure by TJ. Yep, and the ball goes out of bounds. The Chicago's keeper's not as comfortable with the ball. That's why you see that pressure going at him. Okay. Fulmer kind of, Fulmer, look at look at Fulmer kind of walking up almost to midfield. Never really see a Connie do that. He no. just hangs around by the net. Yeah, my, Michael Vollmer's going to be good with his feet. So okay. any, any opportunity that that ball gets played back, and I know Coach Risma would be comfortable. Score just that fast. TJ, I food to Rody. Say that fast three times, ladies and gentlemen. From Nigeria. Beautiful. T Go ahead. Beautiful finish. Right side netting. I mean, nothing, nothing you could, uh, you know, critique there. That was beautiful. Yep. And then once again, that's how fast this game is. You were finishing up with a great analogy. You've seen one kick. It goes slides over to uh, TJ. And boom! It's in the net. Just that fast. Thanks. It's a five to two yeah. game in Chicago. If they were feeling their if they were feeling good about anything that just went right back out the window yeah and that's uh you know good kudos to tj there because he's played a phenomenal game so that gives him a little bit of credibility not that he needed any but uh it was good stuff oh boy we have uh we're gonna have a foul yeah There's a couple of guys down there for muskegon we have an official chatting with uh with a uh, Chicago guy, no cards or nothing. Fulmer does a nice job kicking it out of there. But it goes over to Chicago, right back over to Muskegon. And it's going to roll right down to their keeper. That's Yamada out there defensively. Tell you what, we got a nice header in there by Brandon Edwards. That's going to leave it over to Mendez, Aldani Mendez. Mendez has it, doesn't have anybody open. Great defensive pressure, though, by Chicago. And we have another whistle. And it's going to be Chicago ball. Okay, here comes here come the Mustangs. The physicality hasn't lacked at all. I can see that. No. Chicago trying to get something set up, but tell you what, the Risers doing a nice job defensively, are they not? No, oh, they're doing a great job. It's been uh, in, since the first quarter. They they have man marked everybody, put bodies on balls. Uh, and, oh, nice shot there. Uh, and and they. That, that's given Chicago fits. Yeah, certainly has great defensive effort here tonight by Muskegon. The Chicago still has the ball, and it gets cleared out of there. Muskegon, I'm mean, Chicago still the ball. They throw in way down inside of that right side. Oh, we're going to have a foul. We're going to foul. That's back to back at number 10 there. Who's that? That's uh, Marciana. Yeah. Like he'd wipe the guy out, and you're arguing about, you know. <laughs> That's the part of soccer I got to learn, yeah. you know. And he pancaked him. Yeah. It's like an offensive lineman. Long kick goes up here to O'Keefe. We have another whistle. Yeah, I don't. 9.37 left to go, 5-2 to two here. Muskegon with the lead. But I'm not sure what the. Sometimes so much happens on that other end. You hear the whistle and you're like going, where'd that come from? Yeah. The Beal is out there. O'Keefe's out there. Yeah, but I Six think. fouls, maybe? Maybe the number of fouls. So now once you reach a certain number. Is it four or five? They were saying six on right now. But let's see. Well, how many is it individually? It's a good question. I forget. I, I think you're right with four. Okay. Yep, there it is. So, yes, he, he got booked there. Uh, and then a red card. So he got the, the foul, so which is probably persistent infringement. Um, and then he got a red card. Did he get the red card or did their coach get the red card? He, he got the red card. He got the red card. And I don't know if the red card's from arguing or, or what, but he... Whoa! He shoved, he shoved him. He shoved the official. Oh, no. Michael Marciana. Shove the official. That's not smart. Oh, no. He's going to be, his season's probably, well, it's going to be done anyway. But, yeah. yeah. That'll be a penalty that more than likely would carry over in the next year. I, if, he will be, uh, he's going to have to go to the locker room. Yeah. And if Muskegon's smart, they won't say anything because he walks right past their, 
bench and they didn't. We got a couple hundred people in here that are gonna say something. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I'll tell you what, we have number eight out here for, um, that is Leo Acosta. Kind of has gone and put his arm around the official a couple different times. Yeah, here in the last the right. minute just to try to settle things down. That's not good. You never want to see that. You know, these no. officials are out here doing a job. And, uh, you know, when there's when they get physical against them, that's uh, there's got to be a line that's drawn. Yep. So now question. So that's so the red card's five minutes? Yep. Yep. Now with the ejection, does it make it longer or does it just stay at five minutes? I think it's just going to stay, and I think there's probably going to be some uh, some penalties for uh, Marciana uh, going forward, yeah. you know, whether that's extra games or, uh, you know, a suspension or, or something. I don't know, but that's that's not a good look from Chicago there, and I know that <laughs> their coaches immediately wanted that player gone. So yeah. kudos to them and kudos for Acosta to trying to smooth things over. But and and now you got to worry about, and it doesn't seem like, it seems like Chicago's bench has calmed down. Yes, yep. But you certainly don't want that to carry over, and a play gets chippier and you even have more guys right. getting hurt, that'd, especially more on the Muskegon side. That'd be the worst thing that could happen right now is that this continues to get chippy, and, um, and I don't know what the refs are talking about, but um, it does not look good. Yep. Well, they have two minutes on the, for the penalty, but I think they might have to change that, but I am not a soccer expert yeah. by no means. Five, once again, five to two, Muskegon with the lead, 9.37 left to go fourth quarter. And we just had number 10, Michael Marciana was, he had a five minute penalty and then shoved an official, so. Unfortunate for him. That's, uh, for Akani Mayombo, he's been, uh, he got hurt in the third quarter. Yeah, maybe he tweaked a hip. Yeah, I don't I don't know if it was just a, was that like a cramp or something, but he's out. Looked like, yeah, it looked like it was his hip, though. Like in yeah. mid, midsection, something happened. Yeah. But now you look at him across the way. He's up standing on the bench, kind of cheering for his guy. So, yeah. don't know if it was, like you said, a muscle, a hip flexor, who knows what, but seems to look okay now and it looks like it's going to be a two-minute penalty so oh they got two guys in though oh my goodness so it's going to be it's not a three v uh five one two i see it's four on four on i got four on four yeah. right got oh that was in the corner five <laughs> on four he was hiding from he me. was he did a nice <laughs> job too i was just looking right out front going why is this not a you know, why are the numbers even, yeah. So the last two uh, power plays that Muskegon has haven't been successful, so let's see if they can draw oh, something up here. Thank you, good thanks, good analogy. A lot of just a little chippy play going on here. But don't forget though, Chicago scored when they had a when they were at a disadvantage, one man disadvantage. A little shot, oh, a little hold. Chicago gets away with a little bit of a hold and here comes Muskegon. That was O'Keefe's gonna leave it up to Mendez. Going to leave it over there to uh, his brother. The other Mendez shot on goal, no good. Mendez over there battling for it. Both the Mendezes are there right now. <laughs> well, shot yeah. by Mendez. It's got to um, be a special experience yeah. for those two to play yep. with. Shot by Alex Mendez, and we have a Chicago guy down. And here comes a trainer. This was a really first half. And you know, they're like the man, we especially the second quarter. Yeah, it was just flowing. Hardly any whistles. Yeah, Halftime came, and wow, it's just been brutal since then. It's been yeah, it's been lack of flow. Uh, great energy from both teams, but it's just been there's there's nothing. But I think that works into Muskegon's favor. I really do. I think that uh, all these stoppages and you know like. Uh, their their fitness you can tell is above what Chicago's is and this is a huge huge facility to play in when you're not mm -hmm. used to it. So how much bigger is this arena than some of the other arenas? Percentage wise, I gotta say this is 30 40 percent bigger than normal really? indoor soccer. Yeah, it's wider, it's longer. Um, you know they have five v five on the field plus a keeper. You could almost play this with seven. 
He can play seven v seven, and then that you would tell that the field or the uh, the play wouldn't be any different. It would be interesting to see. But yeah, it's it's a big facility and a really nice facility. You know, yeah. a facility. If you haven't been here, Mercy Health Arena, since they've redone it, they've done just a beautiful job of uh, fixing this up. Yeah, this is uh, it's definitely a gem of a place. That's for sure. And it's right here in Muskegon. Quick little turnover, but Michael Fulmer right there to make sure the ball does not advance. But Chicago with the ball. Good defense here by Muskegon, but Chicago gets it across midfield. Over here to number 24 for them. Uh, that is uh, Emina. He's still battling with that ball. Him and O'Keefe. O'Keefe over to Mendez. Over to the other Mendez. Shot score! Alex Mendez with the assist, the goal, Aldoni Mendez. Would you like to set your brother up like that, you know? He might be at the family table <laughs> tomorrow night talking about the assist that he gave his brother. Wow. Special moment there. Very unselfish too, beautiful pass. And really, a, I mean, the pass was beautiful. Absolutely. Just dimed him on the pass. Uh, huh? Chicago's entering that danger zone now. Looks like their coach is going to take a timeout. Um, you know, you're four goals down with about eight minutes left, and we'll see what happens here, but they're going to have to draw something special up. Okay, with that, we're going to take a timeout here. Billy, you ready for a timeout? It's 6-2. to two. Muskegon over Chicago, sending them back over to the one and only Billy Man. Hello. This is Dmitry, the Russian hacker. Please disregard the following message from Catchmark Technologies. It will make my life easier. Thank you. If you own a business today, that business is exposed to digital risk. Data privacy, compliance, and of course, cyber attack risks are just a few that you may need to manage. If you don't have the staff or internal expertise to help mitigate risks your organization faces, call Catchmark Technologies at 616-384-4616. And we're back. Quickest commercial ever. Quickest commercial break ever. By the one. Huh? 30 seconds. That seemed like three seconds, not 30 <laughs> seconds. That's okay, Billy. We love you. We appreciate you guys very much. Our engineers tonight, Billy Mann, Jesse King, Matt Tarkett, P the silky smooth pipes of Lee Andrews on the PA tonight. Dylan Darg up here helping me out, doing the color, doing a great job. General manager here for the Risers of Management. Once again, the head coach, Ben Ritzman, had, has his team ready to play here tonight. They have a 6-2 lead here with about 7.50 left to go fourth quarter. Dylan? Hey, good atmosphere. You got kids dancing around in the stadium, cheering on the home team. Uh, this has been a lot of fun, but uh, if you're Muskegon, again, keep, keep doing what you're doing. Possess the ball, work it around, find your opportunities to get forward. If you're Chicago, I think you got to press like hell and try to get as much as many opportunities as you can because you haven't had many in this fourth quarter. Yeah, once again, our sponsors here tonight, Van Dyke Mortgage, Catchmark Sports, Durga Insurance, and PCN Network. So we want to thank those four companies. Without those four companies, we're not here doing it. Sponsors are everything. And I know Catchmark would love to have sponsors, especially, you know, high school football and fall sports and not, not too far around the corner now as we're into the month of April. I'm sure they're always looking for more sponsors sponsors for high school football and you know and and then going forward so we're going to be back underway here Chicago with the ball down four goals and less than eight minutes left to go still with the ball still hanging around here just at midfield a little bit of battle going on out there Acosta he was the first time we've seen Acosta he was brilliant but he's been he's been quiet tonight and held at bay, that's for sure. Yeah. So uh, Mustang still have somebody in the in the penalty box here. I don't know if he's going to sit there for the five minutes like we talked about before, but it looks like we're at full strength from both sides. Shot on goal, but just uh, didn't even come close. I'm going to try to get this number 17, Jimmy Matthew, hasn't played much tonight. But was that that guy that was so fast the last time we played? 
I think so. I think so. And he's got some speed. He's, he's shown her a couple times, but you're right. He hasn't played a lot. No, he hasn't. He's just been right, played only a few minutes. And that cat's got world-class speed, does he not? Yeah, he gets up and goes. So Muskegon with the ball, and they're just going to send it back to Fulmer. Leaves it over on that right side. Long kick up along the boards. It's going to go right to O'Keefe. It's going to be left out there to Mendez. Mendez, got, oh, no, that's Dinsmore. Dinsmore is going to leave it over, over to O'Keefe. Shot, but no. Their keeper does a nice job of not even letting that get in there at all. <laughs> Their not, keeper had a little bit of a meltdown for something. Yeah, he's not too happy, is he? No, I don't know if it, one of his players wasn't looking back or what. I'm going to call number 17 the Rocket. And Jimmy Matthew, Matthew, that's his name, the Rocket Man. Gets a little shot on goal. Great save by Vollmer. Yeah, man. he was just right there to make it. Scoop that thing right up. Those are the ones that will help you build those confidence going mm -hmm. forward. Yeah, good analysis. Thank you. Chicago still with the ball. It's a little over six minutes left now. Still down four, stolen away. Stolen away by Dinsmore. Over to O'Keefe in the middle. He just sends it back to, uh, that's uh, Crawford who snuck in there on us. And they're just, uh, right now, they're just happy Muskegon is just to play a little defense and offense at the same time, as I call it. Yeah, it's going to be a big game of keep away here for about yeah. uh, five minutes. Shot on, goes, score! Just like that! Alex Mendez comes sliding in from the right side, but Frank Franco Calabrese with the assist and a pass. That was a great, great ball by Calabrese. All, uh, all Mendez had to do was touch it home. My goodness. Wow, what a shot and score. Just that quick. And good vision, great vision, because I did not see you know, the, the play was right here kind of in front of us in that corner. And then you see the shot go towards the net, and I look up, and there comes Alex Mendez flying down through there. And boom, just like that, at 7-2 and two of 5.51 left to go for a quarter. Wow. This is, I've never called a game that's as quick as this game, as far as scoring. Yeah, How fast good. you score. That was quick. Again, that was all set up by that pressure, and I mean, he had to make a 30-yard pass that stayed on the ground there, and, and a beautiful finish by Mendez. Mendez brothers both getting a goal now. Yeah. Uh-oh. What's going on now? We got a card. That's going to be two guys in the booth. You know, that's that, that's that guy. I think it was uh, Lopez. Yeah. Number two. He's, yeah, number two. He's been chippy the whole game. The, 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 to me, the ref's doing too much explaining. You know, make your point. Yeah. Be done with it. You don't need to explain it. The call's made. Uh, we don't need to have this big, long conversation about it. Mm. But he seems to enjoy these conversations, and sometimes that's not a good thing. But uh, he's, he, the, ref, uh, the, the refs have done a wonderful job. Yeah, tonight. they have. They've called a good game. And you look at this, the guy we're talking about, just a younger guy. We have a couple of older officials out here with them. So it's that learning curve also yep. as an official. Yeah, he seems pretty confident, but I would I'd keep those conversations to a minimum, yeah. especially with the last five minutes here. Mm -hmm. So 7-2 to two here still, Muskegon with the lead. 5.35 left to go here, fourth quarter. Look at this, the keeper slowly starting to sneak up here now for Chicago, way out of his net. We probably won't get too far, will he? No. I imagine this is about the extent of it right here. Okay. Is Muskegon, if they shoot past that that third line there that they're defending on their on their third, it's it's got to touch the ground at some point before it yeah. goes in the net. So can't just bomb them back. In Ch Chicago trying to get something happen you know, offensively, but they're kind of limited. I mean, they still have what five guys out there, but they're still limited. They yeah. have two guys in the box here yet. So they're trying to make something happen. Go ahead. Yeah, the way the Muskegon's defended, too, it's, uh, you know, adding that extra person. I don't know what help that's going to bring. Yep. Dutch are doing a good job defensively. There we got a long out here to Yamada. Yamada battling, and uh, is this going to go right to the keeper? That was a good battle. Yeah. That was Yamada and Emina, both of them going at it. Turnover here once again by Mendez. Mendez has it. Gonna, oh, 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 tried to do the fancy kick, but it didn't go in. O'Keefe has it, had it. 
He hasn't, he had it just that fast in this game, and here comes the Rocket Man. Trying to battle in there, trying to get a shot on goal. Boy, he just about did, I'll tell you what. Um, the keeper had to come way out there, did he not? Uh, TJ, TJ almost chased him down there, I think, too. Uh-oh. Oh, nice job by Fulmer just to clear that and get that mess out of there, isn't it, in front of him. 3.59 left to go now, fourth quarter, 7-2. to two. Muskegon with the lead. Every tick of the second, so important here, even though they're up five. And ben Richmond's not going to be happy until that horn sounds again. No, no, and you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. A lot of, a lot of minutes left. Yes. Just the thing off right. Good job here still defensively. Uh, that's Potts in there, really giving a Chicago guy fits. And here comes O'Keefe. Oh, stolen away. It's, I'll tell you what, now we got a three on one, or oh, three on two. You know, here comes TJ from that real left side. Nice stop by the keeper. Back out to O'Keefe. O'Keefe trying to take it and trying to dribble it in here on that left side, but just got blocked. He had Potts out here on the top. I yeah, thought he yeah, might yeah. turn and kick back to Potts. Chicago cross midfield, but stolen away there by Crawford. Back to midfield. Three minutes now left to go fourth quarter. Five goal lead here for Muskegon. Dylan? Oh, it's pretty pretty well done job so far by Muskegon. Uh, again, every second off the clock is important, uh, but continue to play the way you're playing. Uh, these guys have done a wonderful job all night. Great stop by Vollmer. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice block by Vollmer. Mendez goes down, no whistle. Still one-on-one -on -one here. And this is going to send it back to the keeper. Actually, don't mind the no call there. No, no, it keeps that clock moving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was Alex Mendez that went down. I tell you what, he goes down. He's looking for a foul every yeah. time, is he not? Yep. There's a chip. Nice job. Look at this. It's going to go. No, wide left. The keeper was completely out of the net. Another shot over here to the right side. Oh, I tell you, he used his hands outside the box. Did the he? Chicago keeper, he did it outside the box. Got away with it. Another little push in the back. Densmore went down, stolen away by Crawford. Back over to Chicago. Chicago trying to get something happen. Oh, he wanted to pass it over there. There was nobody there. That's uh, Volmer, is it not? No, Volmer's. Uh, no, Merker, Merker, Merker. Yeah. Yep. I knew it was an R. <laughs> Chicago still with the uh, ball. 135 left to go. Five point, five goal lead here for Muskegon. And yeah, Muskegon's done a good job of keeping this ball in yeah. play. No fouls. The yeah, clock really. keeps going. Oh, a long shot there, high. Great save by Volmer. That was. Do you think, did he push that up and out of there? Yeah, well, he's grabbing his fingers. Hopefully he's all right. Another one's high. Yeah. Oh, he is grabbing his fingers. Yeah. He did take that. We can't. <laughs> I don't see another blue jersey on the bench for Muskegon, so uh, we got to make sure he finishes <laughs> this thing out right. Yes. And the shot goes up high and goes out of bounds. 108 left to go here. Volmer with the ball. Nice pass. Nice long pass. Both these goalies have great long passes here for Muskegon. Ball. No, I thought it was going out of bounds. Stays inbounds here. Chicago with the ball. One minute. A little under one minute now. 55 seconds left to go. Shot in on goal. But easy save there for the keeper for Chicago. Really so impressed here tonight with Muskegon's defense. My goodness. Hey, wow. Give up two goals in a playoff game. Yeah. I guess a good ball club that you've struggled with a little bit throughout the season. Yep. Chicago just trying to make something happen here as we're down 34, down to 34 seconds. Shot almost in, but in there by number four, that is uh, Lopez. And a whistle. That's going to be a card. Oh. Whoa, we don't need that. O'Keefe just kind of... O'Keefe went and talked to him, and then all of a sudden he kind of gave him a little shove in the back. And uh, O'Keefe makes a good point. There's 25 seconds left. There's no need for that foul, but you know, saying something and then having a physical altercation is a different. Yeah, O'Keefe handled it perfectly by saying something yeah. and looking at the clock. Didn't need to shove him. Didn't need to say it. Yeah, didn't need to put yep. his arms on him. And now we got this guy from Chicago coming out here. Yeah, 
it's, uh, we're, we're seconds away from imploding. The best things the ref could do is just let this thing. Yep. Uh, and TJ <laughs> doing a good job. He just grabs him. Yep. Was that Potts? That's, uh, no, no, it's well. not Potts. That, it's uh, Calabrese. Calabrese. Calabrese's been in the mix a couple of these altercations, yeah. hasn't he? Calabrese and then uh, Costa just kind of slap hands like, hey, we're okay. Yep. Let it go. Oh, four, number four just got a red card. Just head to the head to the locker room, right? Don't say nothing to him. Twenty-five point three seconds left to go, and we cannot get out of this bill. <laughs> this might be the and longest then, I, twenty-five seconds. This might be longer than the basketball the yeah. final four tonight if it gets down to seconds. And what I mean is, I'm enjoying this. I'm having fun and having fun with you, but it's yeah. like this game is over. Yep. Let's. Let, you know, let's get out of here and get out, everybody out of here safe and everybody drives home safe. And yep. it's going to be a great win here tonight for the risers. Head coach Ben Ritzman, man, he just continues to impress me yeah. every single every single game. A great game plan for tonight, and it worked out flawless. Yeah, their defense, once again, was just, just so awesome tonight. So, so awesome. And all their counterattack, too, yeah. that they had, uh, you know, that the high pressure that they applied on Chicago, you could tell that they were not uh, comfortable with the ball. And, uh, you know, you think about probably three or four of those goals that Muskegon scored was because of that pressure. So, mm -hmm. Muskegon's, I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even attack here if I'm Muskegon. No, just kind of play keep away here. And, yeah, just try to get out of here without getting anybody else hurt. And another score, just like that. Alex Mendez, really, Chicago never even played defense on him. He just kind of walked it in. He just walked it in. 15.8 seconds left to go, eight to two. And they were just, I mean, there was no, they just kind of dribbled it down and uh, in. You can see everybody getting excited now on the sideline. This is a big moment here. I gotta imagine wherever Mike Sh or uh, Matt Schmidt is somewhere in the stadium, he is smiling from ear to ear. Oh, absolutely! What a guy! The guy had a dream, right? Yep. He had a dream to bring soccer to Muskegon to make it relevant. Matt Schmidt, you did that. Great job. Ten seconds left here. Nine seconds. Five. Long shot on goal. Nothing there. Another shot. Oh my goodness! Almost went in. Two zero. Muskegon Risers win it. Their quarterfinal, they're going to play next week, Friday night here. They win this one 8 to 2 over the Chicago Mustangs. And hopefully now, Chicago can, everybody can just get out of here and go home and go home, and eat, you know, see, see some high fives and handshakes going on. Good to see. Yeah, good sportsmanship yep. all around. Oh, wow. What a, what a great atmosphere. Everybody on their feet yeah. now, congratulating the risers. And, First playoff win at home. Come back next week to do it again. And the funny thing is, I know Ben Schmidt. I mean, I'm sorry. Had, I did this like the last time I was with John. Ben Ritz was supposed to be getting on an airplane and going to Florida. Oh, is he? Yeah, well, yeah spring break. Absolutely. Yeah, him and his family. Is supposed to, his family, I think, is they're on. They're going to be on their way there shortly. The men were supposed to be getting on a getting on a plane and going to Florida, but guess what, Ben? You might be having wow. to stay here and coach a little bit this week. Yeah, and that's not such a bad thing either. No, nope, it's not. So, the Muskegon Risers eight their season continues. They will play next week, uh, Friday night. Continue to uh, watch Catchmark Sports, and they'll have the time and their opponents for next week, Friday. Once again, a lot of thank yous here tonight. Once again. The GM here, Matt Schmidt, their head coach, Ben Ritzma. Lee Andrews doing the public address. Our engineers tonight, Billy Mann, Jesse King, and Matt Tarkat. Our sponsors, Van Dyke Mortgage, Catchmark Sports, Durga Insurance, and PCN Network. Dylan Darga, thoughts here as we uh, wrap this one up. Hey, I got a nice little smile on my face. This is, uh, this is a beautiful thing to see in Muskegon. I know we touched on it last time, but, man, all these people coming to support a local team like this and that's got Chuck full of Michigan talent and 
players connected to the area. And you got a Coach Ben Richman right now going around, giving everybody high fives and claps and thanking them for coming out. And you know, we got a lot of we got we got the Final Four going on. We've got spring break going on. Yeah. And, and people took time out of their day to come watch soccer in downtown Muskegon. That's right. And I tell you what, they're going to be back right back here next week, Friday night. So once again, pay attention to Catch Mark Sports as they will have all the information that you need here going forward. So once again, Jesse King, Matt Tarkap, Billy Mann, Billy, thank you. Jesse, thank you. It was a lot of fun here tonight. And the final, once again, for Mercy Health Arena, the Muskegon Risers 8, the Chicago Mustangs 2. Muskegon wins and advances. For Dylan Darga, I'm Cal Van Single. Have a great weekend, everybody. Be safe. God bless. Jenna Potts, your local Farm Bureau insurance specialist with the Durga Insurance Group. We are a company dedicated to serving only Michigan. We know you, we understand you, we protect you. All of us at the Durga Insurance Group live and work right in this area, so we're always nearby. Local agent, local service, and local savings. Come and see us today or visit our website, durgainsurancegroup.com, to find out more. Van Dyke Mortgage, we, you know, we started uh, 1987, July of 1987, the company was founded here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We recruited Mario in to join our company as one of our uh, branches to serve the Muskegon community. Uh, he has grown to uh, five locations, uh, serving people up and down the lake shore. A lot of companies, they're sometimes in it more for themselves in closing that deal for just the monetary reward. And I think with Mario and his company, it's not just that. And I don't know if that always happens in our world. Hello, this is Dmitry, the Russian hacker. Please disregard the following message from Catchmark Technologies. It will make my life easier. Thank you. If you own a business today, that business is exposed to digital risk. Data privacy, compliance, and of course, cyber attack risks are just a few that you may need to manage. If you don't have the staff or internal expertise to help mitigate risks your organization faces, call Catchmark.